All right, Councilman Veal. Here. Councilman Patino. Here. Councilman Phillips. Here. Councilman Casella. Here. Supervisor Thurston. Here. Everyone, please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Please be seated, everyone. Thank you. Uh, next item will be uh, concerning the uh, agenda. I have actually uh, a couple of changes that have come up uh, during uh, you know the last you know few hours, and I'll mention it. Some is making the agenda uh, shorter, and some is ordering it around. Uh, first of all, the uh, order at the request of Majo Felipe uh, and uh, you know Angela, I'm going to move Joe on the volleyball. Yet uh, he has a. A family issue uh, move that up to first under discussions uh, the Mart's lighting you know matter will be removed uh, this time you know Steve hasn't been able to get all the information on on that also the proposal to hire the deputy building uh, inspector is coming off uh, we'll have uh, some discussion in uh, executive session with respect to the hiring issue uh, one item that uh, we forgot to add, and uh, I asked uh, Christian about it, is recall we had interviewed uh, Mr. Uh, Exelson, uh, and uh, I, we went out uh, for ads uh, for the positions, and no one else has uh, yet submitted any interest in uh, the assessment appeal review board. Uh, you'll recall we do have a time uh, issue uh, with respect to getting him on board really approved tonight so he could qualify to take the uh, training class that's required before he sits. So uh, I'm proposing that we you know, discuss that appointment tonight. Again, we had interviewed the person and there are no other you know, slots at this point in time, people interested in, in that position. And then... Uh, now, finally, you know, we'll have a discussion at the request of a, a citizen a request on uh, emergency water hookup, which I'll add, and I'll add those uh, items uh, toward the uh, end of the uh, set uh, agenda. So uh, if anybody has any you know, questions on those or any objections, you know, let me know. If not, then I'll deem that the agenda is amended accordingly and then we'd move to adopt the amended agenda. Move to adopt the amended agenda per the supervisor's uh, statement. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Getting that motion passed. Thank you. Next will be to acknowledge the minutes from the March 22nd meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. The, We'll move on then. I'm going to just make a few comments uh, relevant actually to later uh, tonight's discussions on two topics. Try to keep it short since we do have a number of things to do. And I think that uh, we want to hear, uh, you know, Frederick uh, talk about the financial, you know, condition. First, you know, since we have a busy agenda, I've asked uh, people that are presenting tonight to try to keep it short to 10 or 15 minutes, depending on the, you know, the uh, topic. And I'll remind people as we uh, go forward on that. Uh, second is we do have a, uh, a motion uh, that we've done in the past uh, that's later on in the agenda on a very special you know, topic, I think, and that's uh, proposing that we uh, recognize April as Autism Awareness Month. You know, I'll yeah, I'll make sure at the time. And... Uh, we also received a, a very nice write-up as by way of comments, but I'll uh, read some of it from uh, Dawn Nassi, you know, with respect to autism and some interesting information I think you'll find uh, very uh, uh, valuable as we move you know, forward. But briefly, and, uh, you know, Bill uh, will uh, add some more to this discussion because we're going to be talking about whether or not to what extent to reopen town hall. Uh, the county has reached kind of a plateau, stable, in that sense, on uh, 
you know, COVID numbers. However, there is still a large uh, level, a high level of activity uh, of uh, active, you know, cases. Uh, hospital rates have gone slightly down, and unfortunately, very regretfully, we had one additional death in the um, uh, county uh, just uh, during the last week. Uh, we've had uh, right now running at, and Bill may have more recent figures, or a rate of about 4.19 percent, according to what County Executive Molinaro told us uh, this this earlier this afternoon. Uh, he's hoping that in the next two weeks, as more people get vaccinated, uh, the uh, number will come down to the 3% range, which uh, he and uh, the public health department feel is a much more manageable level. Uh, the number of vaccinations has improved uh, significantly. Uh, I was able to visit the center uh, out at J.C. Penney. Uh, last week. If any of you uh, haven't seen it, would like to see it, uh, let me know or get, let Bill, you know, know. Uh, you know, they're, uh, you know, doing a lot of good things out there. It was very active, uh, actually full, you know, when I was there. And uh, we're seeing uh, right now around 40% of Dutchess County population have received their first, you know, vaccination and 23% uh, have been fully, you know, vaccinated. So the numbers are coming up, but unfortunately, during the next two weeks, uh, the numbers will drop down uh, significantly because the Johnson & Johnson uh, doses uh, that you've read about having uh, been uh, spoiled uh, are going to start impacting uh, the county vaccinations during the next two weeks. So we'll see a stoppage of Johnson & Johnson and then just reliance on the Moderna uh, and the Pfizer you know, vaccine. So. They're, they've been doing some reallocation work, but uh, basically uh, the county is continuing, though, with its various uh, smaller pods. J.C. Penney, Dover continue at uh, the, the full output at this point in time. So there is uh, some guarded optimism, but according to, I think, the health officials and tool, we see the uh, youth that are younger than 17 years uh, are able to get vaccinated. Uh, they don't expect any significant drop off those numbers. The town uh, for the board's uh, uh, reference has been staying in the 100 to 109 active cases range. The village is around uh, 20 to 25. Uh, so we'll have some more discussion when we get to the uh, agenda uh, as one of the first topics on that. Bill, is there anything on that, those numbers you'd like to add? So the numbers that you uh, just uh, uh, articulated are the latest numbers that Dutchess County has. They're as of April 10th. So right now there's 1,232 cases in Dutchess County. We're at 4.19% positivity rate, which is what uh, you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, at this particular moment in time, we still have a significant number of cases in the county. And I could tell you from an emergency medical services standpoint, uh, the calls that are being dispatched in our town, more than half of them are COVID patients right now on a daily basis. So there's a lot of COVID out there. What we're seeing is uh, obviously less hospitalizations and thank God, you know, thankfully less fatalities, uh, but they do believe that these variants uh, are now running rampant, which are more uh, contagious and less lethal. So. That said, um, I do believe we need to be on a path to open this town hall. I spoke to uh, uh, Councilman Phillips and Councilman Casella earlier, uh, and I, I'm sure my colleagues will agree, Councilwoman Bettina, we, I think our objective here is we want to open this town hall, but we also want to do this in a safe manner uh, so that we can make sure that we are not uh, inadvertently uh, creating a cluster. I think it might be reasonable to take a look at May 1st as a possible opening time period. That'll give us the ability in two weeks to see where the numbers are uh, and make that decision. Uh, but I think perhaps we can have additional discussion about this later on in the meeting. Uh, but I, 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 I agree we need to be on a path to open this town hall, especially with uh, water and sewer billing and things like that going on. But we have to be careful that we don't inadvertently contribute to uh, the number of cases that are out there. Right. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay, uh, any other comments? Or we can have more comment discussion during the uh, topic later on. If not, then I'd like to yield the floor to Frederick. Frederick uh, wants to present the uh, financial overview uh, basically for the first quarter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, 
Supervisor Pasco. Um, this presentation will be uh, for the period uh, January to March of, uh, uh, of last month, so basically the first quarter of 2021. And it will be uh, um, uh, a build upon what I presented on March 8, 2021, which was for uh, the period January through February of 2021. So I'll look at uh, some of our major revenue uh, uh, items and also the expenditure lines. And then I'll give a summary of where we are at in terms of the overall expenditure in some of our major funds. Now, one of our major uh, revenue items is the rent of real property. And uh, as I reported on March 8, uh, I think this is coming up really nicely with the budget. We have so far received 74,000 out of uh, 240,000 budget, and we are averaging 24,000 a, a month. Uh, if this is to go on, I expect that by the end of the year, we'll have uh, uh, achieved our budget uh, approximately 280,000 end of the year. One of the other lines was fines and forfeited bail. When I reported the, uh, on uh, March 8, uh, we were a bit concerned because uh, the month of January, we only had 6,000 uh, revenue, but we picked up quite a bit um, in, in February. We had about 20,000 received. So, so far between January and February, 26,000. We haven't received the March collections yet, but um, this is encouraging. I'm hoping that uh, the revenues will be picking up. Uh, mortgage tax, um, you, you've all seen the report from Dutchess County. Um, and the month of January, about 90, 93,000, uh, February 91, and then we had 110 for March. Um, so I'm happy to report that uh, this is coming along really nice, just as, as we did in 2020. Uh, so, so far, for the three months, uh, we are, uh, it's an average of a net 266,000, which is 59% of the total budget. If this was to go on like this, uh, we, we will end up with uh, uh, quite a, a good amount of revenue in the mortgage tax line. Uh, assuming that uh, the average continues the same as it is uh, for the first three months, we may end up with a million uh, uh, 64,000. But uh, uh, this is, uh, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen, but right now as things are going on, it seems that we are on the right track, not only to achieve our budget, but to overpass it, because our budget is only 450,000. Building permits, uh, when I reported last time, I was a bit concerned that uh, we were not doing very well, but it really picked up in the month of March, and so far we have received 84,000 out of a budget of 320,000. So. Uh, given where we are now, January through March, I'm confident that this will not be a problem by the end of the year. Sales tax revenue, uh, you all know that we have an agreement with the Dutchess County of a million ninety four thousand for the whole year. Uh, this agreement is still in force until March 31, 2023. But I'm happy to report that uh, last month we were surprised with a sales tax growth of over half a million that you, we were uh, advised was attributable to the year 2020. I allocated this uh, growth, which is extra sales tax over, about, over and above the 1,094,000 into the DB fund. Uh, so in, in 2020, we are going to report sales tax, sales tax of 1.45 million. Uh, chips revenue in the highway uh, fund we received a letter from uh, New York State DOT uh, letting us know the maximum available funds, 278,000, but we are eligible for up to 95% uh, of those, which will be 264,000. In summary, uh, A fund revenue 2.9, B fund 113, 8%, highway 3.3 million, 80%. Uh, and now to the expenditure uh, highlights. Uh, I just so, so Frederick, just a couple of quick points here. Yes. So 
uh, going through this pretty quickly. Uh, you, you went through it quickly, and, and thank you for the summary. So it looks like rental income, as you said, we're doing great. Um, you know, if we continue doing a current current pace of 24K per month, we're going to exceed the budget by 40 something thousand. Looks like the fines and forfeiture forfeitures are doing pretty well. Mortgage tax is doing phenomenal right now. We're going to probably exceed the budget of 450. Uh, I think we're averaging Dick between what 85 and 90K per month. So yeah, nice. Nice. Say we, nice. say we go significantly above the 450. So great news there. Uh, building permits look really good at 84%, but if you continue on at the roughly 28K, you'll exceed the budget. Um, sales tax revenue, great news story. So this is on top of the 1094, we're guaranteed by the county. We were already $500,000 above that. Is that what your comment was? Yes, that is what I'm reporting. We already received the money. Okay, and it looks like the trips money is going to be a little bit better than we budgeted the 220. So we're about 44K, assuming we get 264. So Good news story. Hopefully we can continue throughout the, the rest of the year, but this is a very, very good first quarter uh, story, I would say. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you very much. And now to the expenditure highlights. Uh, there are a few lines that uh, are, uh, you know, we are, we are monitoring very closely, uh, but uh, as we uh, agreed at the beginning of the year, any line that we have a problem with, uh, our duties to come before the town board and then report that. And if necessary, uh, that we need to move money from another line or from uh, um, another source, then we'll do so. So the, some of these lines are like the telephone line, uh, which we have been cut about 58% uh, uh, because we only had a budget of 18,000. There's also the miscellaneous line. Um, in this line, we did incur some expenditure in the deep cleaning because of COVID, and that's why it's uh, significantly higher or high, 21,000 out of a budget of 40,000. Uh, so 10,800 uh, in that line was just for the deep cleaning. Um, we have a, a line in the B fund for the summer director play, uh, uh, playground. Uh, this is the line that we're using to pay our receptionist. Uh, um, I know the original plan was uh, for a different line, so it's already at 100%. I think that uh, we need to move money to uh, boost this line because we still have our receptionist uh, who is helping us with uh, directing traffic in, into the town hall. Uh, and this should not be a problem because we know the B fund uh, has some quite some... Uh, significant amount of fund balance. Uh, then we have in the highway, the snow removal, we spent already 54,000, which is 54% of the budget of 100,000. But as we know, there's no more snow, uh, or there is, it will be very negligible. So the only other, uh, uh, we'd only be concerned it towards the end of the year. Right, if, that's the issue. Uh, um, uh, some major snow towards the end of the year, but as, as of right now, only 54%, which is not too bad. And then also salt, the same thing, snow and salt go together. We have spent 181,000, 48% of a budget of at least about 5,000. Uh, so, uh, only, oh, only so, there's, a, there's a couple comments on the expenditure highlights. Maybe you can kind of enlighten us a little bit here for the. Uh, a sixteen twenty dot four fifty to twenty one thousand. Did we get reimbursed for any of the COVID expenses at all from the state, um, no. the county, or is that out of pocket and you eat it? Yeah, we are eating it. They rejected all of our previous uh, efforts. Uh, we're below the threshold, and no matter how hard Frederick and I tried to get what we thought was reasonable reimbursement, they they denied it. Okay. So you're not going to get. Uh, those protective measures uh, reimbursements under FEMA just based on the fact that we're way under the threshold in the town of Wabinshire. However, the money that we get as part of the American Rescue Plan, I would say, would wash that. Yes. Uh, uh, we have been told that we could get up to 2.93 million uh, under the American uh, the Stimulus Plan. Uh, although we should be sharing it with the village of Wapinders Falls, uh, I don't know quite what the formula is of sharing that amount. But if that comes in, of course, it will wash uh, off this uh, amount that we have spent on COVID-related expenses. Um, 
So hopefully that comes in and then we'll see how to share it with our, our village. Um, Wait a minute, yeah. just one, one question. Um, you said on the A fund revenue, we're at 70% of, of the income. What are we typically at this type of this time of the year? Because I know it's front loaded because of all the tax revenue. Yes. Typically, are, are we at 70 or plus minus? Uh, typically around the same. 70, okay. 70, yeah, so we are where we should be if you compare to last year. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, yes. thank you. And then just that one more question. We have Mike Sheen on the phone. Though, so I'm hoping Mike can answer this. We kind of talked about this a little bit for the snow removal. You know, we're at 54% budget of 100. And then the salt, you know, roughly 58, uh, 40, sorry, about 50%. Um, you feel you're pretty comfortable, Mike. We, we're not going to need to transfer any funds at this point in time. It looks, you know, like you'll be able to make it through the rest of the year with what you have. Or do you think at some point in time, you're going to have to take a look at this as we get closer towards, you know, say, um, late fall, early winter, that we're going to have to take a look at this. Any idea? Or is it just, you know, how do you, how do you feel about that? And we, we in pretty good shape. Mike. Mike, you're on mute. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable right now, Al. Okay. But that's all. Okay. And how about the snow removal? You're in pretty good shape, even though you're about 54% of your budget, all right? Uh, yes. Okay. All right, just making sure. Making sure we're still okay. Thank you. All right. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, expenditure summarized, A fund 1.1 million so far, only 25% of our budget, uh, because it's just uh, three months into the year. B fund 210,000, 15%, highway 987,000, 24%. Our cash balances as of end of March, A fund 3.2 million, B fund 5.5 million, Highway 4.9. Estimated fund balances as of end of March. A fund 1.1 million. B fund 5.1 million. Highway 2.5. And this 2.5 includes the half a million that we received last week for the sales tax growth of 2020. Parkland Trust Fund. Estimated fund balance 496,000. And this is after uh, adjustments. Uh, you've taken the current balance of 577, included the Spook Hill Park renovation budget of 120,000, um, uh, minus uh, uh, what we might expect to get from uh, the, the from Dutchess County, the grant of 100,000. So basically, out of the budget of 120,000, we will get a grant of approximately 100,000. Uh, Canwood Farms Parks Manor House Temporary Waterproofing, which was approved by the board, 31,000. Canwood Farms Removal of Chimneys, approved 5,872. 5, and then we have the Challenger Field ADA Bathroom, approved June 2020, 100,000. And uh, they won't refund everything because uh, some time back we sold a portable restroom trailer for 6200 So we'll only get maximum of 93800 from Dutchess County. Uh, and then we have the Mats Memorial uh, Field uh, Renovation uh, Expense, uh, again approved time board meeting June 2020, 19000 and we have already spent 1,950 on uh, flagpoles and con concrete. Uh, so that, that's how we get our 496,000 estimated parkland trust fund balance uh, out of the current 577,000. So that uh, concludes the financial highlights. Of course, uh, I sent the details of the AFR we found a highway, revenue and expenditure. And um, if you have any other questions, maybe we can entertain that at this time. What was the $100,000 grant for again? Who killed? So, 
So we, we expect uh, the CBD, CBDG grant from the Spook Hill Park. Rescue. That's the uh, Community Development Block Grant? Right. Okay. Right. So yes. that's, that's still going to come in? There's no issues with that, right? No, no issues. Okay, yeah. good. Got to spend it first, though, if they're back. Exactly. Okay. Except for the Challenger Field one, we, we want to see 100% because uh, of some... Uh, one of the items that we had purchased, we, we had sold it, uh, the restroom trailer for six, in the previous, uh, the, the previous grant, I um, mean, grant that was uh, several years ago, maybe five or six years ago. So they said, okay, uh, we will only give you hundred, you know, uh, less, less than the amount that we sold because that was an item that was bought with the grant. Okay, and relative to the uh, the stimulus money, I know there's still a lot of unknowns out there, but if you can just try to determine uh, if it's gonna be a multi-year payout or a single year payout so okay. that we can more effectively plan for capital uh, potential capital expenditures. Um, I'm hearing some municipalities may get this over a three-year period. I'm hearing, um, depending on the amount of money, it may be uh, broken down differently. So, you know, as we move forward, there's going to be a lot of buzz out there about federal money coming into local municipalities. And this is, this is my understanding is this is coming directly from the federal government to the local government, uh, not going through the state as a conduit, which I believe the legislation indicates it has to come directly from the feds, uh, which is good because generally speaking, when money comes through the state or a higher level of government, each level of government takes a piece of that money as it gets filtered down to the local government. So I believe in this case, this is coming directly in from the feds. Uh, but in order for us to properly uh, plan for capital expenditures, we need to know when the money is going to be arriving. And we also need to know if there's any deliverables associated with that money. In other words, what uh, the stipulation on spending is, things like that. If you can just work on that at your convenience, Frederick, and uh, during your next report at a future meeting, uh, if you have that information, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Bill, um, with respect to the appropriation that was uh, already passed. Yes. That's going to come out in uh, two, uh, it's, it'll be split between two years, 2020 and 2021. Um, and it goes to New York State uh, first but they there's no right now there's no conditions associated with it um and it is has to be distributed by new york state within 30 days to the constituent municipalities okay so my understanding was that uh it was going to come directly from the feds but if it's coming from the state see this is where we have to be careful because uh we'll just say the state generally takes money uh, when it's coming to a lower level. And yeah, there's, there's no there's no ability for them to um, take a cut off the top. Um, it's just that so um, the municipalities that get it directly are those that are that uh, in this case, it's the, in Dutchess County. I believe it's only the city of Poughkeepsie that gets a payment directly because they get uh, they're a so-called C community development block grant. Right, um, issuing entity, to, right. Right. So um, they're giving it, um, so if you're a, a local municipality, you would get it directly. The county would get it directly, um, but the towns and villages, it's distributed through the state. Okay, so if, if Frederick, if we can just keep our eye on the ball and understand how much money we're obligated to receive, I will just say I have uh, reservations about uh, payments that come from the state of New York. And uh, you, I understand what the law says and that we need to get 100%, but we need to be diligent just like we normally are and make sure we get every dollar we're entitled to in this. And if it's credited to fiscal year 2020, Jim, and 2021, no, does that 20, work? 2021 and 2022. Okay, all right. So this would just be a revenue line under, uh, you know, uh, federal or FEMA, whatever it is there, however it comes in, unanticipated now, revenue. This is, that money is separate and apart from, there's also a discussion um, regarding a $3 trillion infrastructure bill. Um, 
which, you know, right now it looks like that would go through the state, through the EFC and, and things like that, at least as the, um, the press release that the, uh, that, um, the White House has put out. But, you know, the details for that infrastructure bill uh, is still pending. There's also, you know, that one has a lot of conditions associated with it. Okay, so in conclusion, from my point here, uh, if we can, unless you know, Jim, if there are specific stipulations on what the spending needs to be or can be on the initial uh, 2.3 million, we're going to need to know that so that we can sit down as a, a uh, as a committee of the whole here and decide uh, what our priorities are uh, whenever uh, we have the opportunity to do so. Right. Thank you. And on that, we're waiting for some guidance from the New York State Controller's Office as to how it's to be spent. Supposedly, it's forthcoming. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you, Frederick. A great report. Thank you, Frederick. Okay. We'll, we'll move on to the public portion of the meeting. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, we're going to have a, please have a motion to open the public portion, then we'll ask uh, our clerk if he's received any comments. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to open the public portion. Okay. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, uh, the motion passed. Uh, Joe, I know you got one comment. Do you have any others? And then uh, please read it into the record. Well, I had one comment which was received and, uh, you know, uh, via the comment page at the Town of Lobbage website. It was disseminated to the board prior to the meeting uh, for, your, for your review. Uh, Al, Al, did you get it, Al Casella? Yes, I did. Yeah, you might want to read it because it involves you and Jeffrey Tomlin's a little leak. Yes, I'm fully aware of the conversation. Well, I had one comment which was received and... Okay, so do you want to comment on it or read it? I think you, maybe, Joe, you should read it into the record. Yeah. Put a little B in the record, but Al, it revolved, I mean. I know. Well, we, I yeah. think first we read it in and then. Uh, yeah, and I'll make comments on it, but that's fine. Yes. All right. So uh, the, uh, the memo was from Jeffrey Tomlins, chairman of the Little League. As the board knows, I am the president of the town of Robinger Little League. I recently spoke with our liaison, Councilman Al Casella, regarding the bathroom floors at Robinson Lane. Yeah, and I'll make comments on it, but that's fine. We both feel it would be more advantageous to just paint the floors and use the substantial savings that would be budgeted for that to repair the cracks on the Challenger field. I hope this meets with uh, a warm reception. Thank you all for your considered support, continued support. Thanks for reading the comment. Let me so let me comment on that. So uh, I know Steve had a proposal in place where he was going to replace the bathroom floors um, over at Robinson Lane, and the uh, team over there speaking with them this past weekend thought it was more prudent to, instead of spending seven to eight thousand dollars, we can go out and um, go ahead and and paint the floors uh, gray. We have a number of volunteers that would go ahead and do that. All we would need to do is buy the paint. Uh, so something pretty simple. There have been no comments, complaints, or anything uh, as far as, you know, the condition of the floor. We're just going to make it a little bit nicer. Uh, I understand Steve's proposal, a uh, very nice proposal that uh, he put together, but at this point in time, we didn't think it was prudent to spend the money. Where we'd like to spend the money, though, is you know, when we start talking about the Challenger field, there was a memo that came out, hopefully all the board members got it, probably about two or four weeks ago from a company called Craftco. There's a number of issues where there's cracks on the Challenger field. Um, uh, together for us the cost is nine thousand eight hundred dollars and we thought it would be more prudent to spend the money over there get that repaired uh it's a safety issue uh the timing is such that you know we're going to put it uh put it out there in may where the weather's a little bit warmer i think tim uh tim brought those comments forward but again that's really the proposal to do uh you know something that's seriously urgent that's the safety issue over there challenger field i don't know if you had a chance to get out there but there are some three and four inch cracks uh, on the infield. And um, again, this company called Craftco has the ability to repair those cracks. I know, Tim, if you want to make any more comments on that, I know you're on mute right now. 
Uh, you pretty much summarized it very well. Uh, you know, we've identified these cracks, talked about it for a while, and I think back in the fall, everyone was in agreement. However, the temperatures were not necessarily cooperating, so we agreed to revisit it, and here we are. So, so we'll be discussing that further when we talk about the bond resolution, because that's you know, intended to be included in there. And I'm sure Steve will have some other comments on the floor when we get to that under discussion. Yeah, but that was that was really Jeff's comment and the comment I, I had with um, of him and, and Camille Mondo and Jamie. So again, that was more the comment. And so wanted to bring it forward. So I was going to introduce it anyway, but uh, Jeff beat me. Up. So thank you, Joe, for reading the comment. Appreciate it. Any other comments? Joe, I guess that's it. Okay. So with that, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? The none motion passed. And we'll move into uh, our discussion topics. The first item is uh, with respect to the volleyball, you know, courts and the net. You know, Jessica, why don't you uh, lead it off and then uh, Joe can, uh, you know, comment, you know, further. So, Jessica, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. I had sent over to the board a uh, draft version of the contract that was provided to us by Joe uh, Philippe, and it details the terms of in-kind payment for rental, uh, including the uh, maximum cost uh, of the volleyball nets. And I had, uh, there had been a question uh, by email about what the estimate was for uh, what their field rental fees would be, were they paying it? And um, I had responded it would be about $1,200 uh, per year. So still in the, in the end, it, it works out uh, very close to even if not a little bit to our benefit. So uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Joe. I guess that's their standard version of an agreement that they have used. And um, Steve, you can also comment. You uh, were out there with Joe and I. and So doing... before we turn it over to Joe, can I just ask you a question, Jessica? Yes. So I, first of all, I didn't see the 1200, so thank you very much. That was one of the questions I had. But I guess mm -hmm. the, the question is, and probably Joe can answer this, what, what did that cost? And then the second thing, who's going to maintain this? Um, I also proposed the I proposed a question to Steve on, is he going to be the one responsible for, you know, maintaining these courts so they're in the condition that's, you know, uh, what's going out there can play on. I just want to make sure everything is safe uh, so that nobody gets hurt, uh, et cetera. So I don't know, Steve, if you can comment, are you, are you or one of your workers going to be going out there to, you know, weekly, um, every couple of days, you know, make sure that the, the sand and everything is okay, make sure that everything is leveled, or is that something you're going to do in the contract? Uh, you know, just some questions we need to have answered before we sign the contract. I would imagine it would be my responsibility to maintain it, and um, okay. I could have somebody out there once a week uh, to do that. We do would probably use the same machine that we drag the softball fields with to drag the sand, and um, you know, pick up any debris that might be in the in the sand. And I believe Joe, when we met out there, there's a. Uh, minimal amount of rake, uh, raking or leveling that would be done after each use just to keep the uh, playing surface uh, level. It, it reminds me of how a lot of the leagues out at Robinson uh, rake the larger divots after their own use. And Joe had mentioned that they have the ability to do that after each one of their uses as well. Now, this uh, is again only going to be for two courts, correct? Yes. Okay. Steve can can jump in about the three court versus two court. Yeah, situation. that's what I was going to go next. Okay, thank you. To expand the uh, two courts to three courts safely um, is going to require quite a bit of uh, construction. It's I, it's not something I'm going to be able to do this season, and you know we're going to need to bring the engineers in on that if if that's the plan to move forward. Uh, have them look at that, come up with a plan on how to do it, and. Uh, you know, there's some obstacles that would have to be overcome in order to, to have the three courts there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Joe about the agreement that he sent over or? I, um, what I would need to, 
Oh, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. No, you had mentioned that the courts needed to be expanded slightly. Uh, right. How far? I mean, how far do they have to go? See. Um, it's from front to back is where we need to extend Double them. Feet? I mean, is it just? Yeah, it's about two to three feet, I believe, on each okay. side. And it seems like, Steve, right, it was kind of a product of uh, encroachment of the grass back into the courts as opposed to really anything else, right? Yeah, and I want to bring up the grade on the one side. I'd be more comfortable doing that because it does drop off uh, pretty quickly um, on the side the closest to the road. Yes. But I do have some material that we could use to do that. Oh. Joe, did you have anything you wanted to add? Oh, I uh, what I would like to, the board to do tonight is to authorize me to reduce the three courts down to two. So then Joe and I can get together and move forward on, on getting them into uh, regulation size. Jim Horan, have you looked at the agreement uh, that uh, Joe has proposed? Yes, it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it just, it talks about uh, with respect to, um, you know, that they agree to um, uh, purchase the new equipment. Um, the, uh, what's somewhat unclear in the agreement is um, who is going to be installing the equipment? Um, and then the second question, uh, you know, and then it, it, it talks about, um, the, uh, uh, you know, that they're going to have a certificate of insurance. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward for, for what that entails, but, you know, there is no um, provisions in there for maintenance agreements or, uh, you, you know, uh, provisions for them to maintain the field or, you know, provide any classes or things like that. You know, we, in the, um, you know, th this doesn't, um, this is not like the agreement with soccer or Little League where, you know they're make they they are um, contractually obligating themselves to prepare a program. Right. Um, it's just that you know they in in return for purchasing the um, uh, the equipment that you know they can use that to offset the fees for renting the uh, renting right. the courts. Right. So it sounds like that uh, we're everything's in order that we could in fact approve. Uh, the uh, supervisor to sign this and authorize Steve to go do the grading, you know, tonight, uh, so as not to further delay. Uh, since nice weather is getting in place, uh, Jim is contractually acceptable to be uh, executed. Yeah, I mean, as as far as that goes, like I said, it's just uh, okay. an agreement regarding you know the rental of the courts. Um, so, and you know, as far as. Uh, you know, the maintenance obligations, the town right. will have the maintenance obligations anyway. Right. Um, regardless. So, you know, the town for, for, for liability purposes needs to, you know, go out and inspect the courts and make sure that they're in a safe condition. So, um, and that's, that's a, you know, that's a, an obligation we really cannot delegate to a third party. That's right. So Steve, would you have enough money in your current budget lines to, uh, go and do that additional grading you know, in the setting the, uh, length backwards two to three feet? The, um, the only thing that wouldn't be budgeted would be the beach stand that would be required. The the other fill I have on hand um, and it would be bit labor, but um, I don't have the funds for the uh, beach sand and uh, haven't quite calculated what the amount would be on that yet. But I did look up to find out that it's about $40 a ton. Um, I, need, I wasn't able to calculate how many tons I would need. Okay, um, you know, is that something that uh, we could still go ahead and authorize a signing tonight, you know, so as to get it going and then Steve, you come back, you know, if you need additional budget, you know, for the sand, we can at least give you the general go ahead to look into that, I would think. What's the board think? What's the board's preference? Well, Steve, do you, do you need the extra sand to, to build out the two courts or do you have enough there today? because this now adds another expense for us, right? That's not in your budget. There's, it's, there's gonna be some sand necessary to 
uh, buff up what is there and extend it out, um, you know, the areas that we spoke about earlier. Does the sand have to be replaced every year? It has not been replaced since I've been here, no. And that's, that's the other thing is the boundaries of the court should be being moved out regardless of whether we were replacing the nest. <clears throat> right. I, I wasn't aware oh. of the um, dimensions of the uh, volleyball courts, and we're undersized if there's a desire to be official-sized uh, volleyball courts. Yeah. So it, <laughs> replacing the nets are, are not it really, and even for a safety perspective of the fact that people are used to traveling back a certain amount while they're playing the game and, and things like that, uh, the boundary should be increased even if we weren't replacing the nets. Oh, is there some regulation, some requirement with respect to the sand and the quality of it and the re replacement? What's your experience on replacement of it? Because I know uh, having run uh, beaches before, beach club myself, the sand gets old within a relatively short period of time and you do tend to to need replace to it. replace it because you get uh, uh, various animals that are playing around in it, if you know what I mean, and other, you know, unsanitary conditions that uh, it, it should be replaced, in my opinion. But, Joe, you're the expert. What do you say? Um, thank you. I, I don't think that actually at our two other sites that they've actually ever replaced the sand. And as Steve mentioned, they haven't replaced it since he's been here Um out there at Marts as well. Freshening it up, bringing a little new sand in would be great, but it is definitely can be expensive. Like if you were building brand new courts, bringing in all the sand at once, right. very, you know, very expensive feat. Uh, here, I think it's just filling in. Oops. Oh. Internet is the right size. In care if it's raked, she mentioned like baseball fields get raked out, you know, it's the same idea when you're done using you rake it out level it out rake out any maybe rocks or any debris that fell in it's usually maintained for a long time okay you know how many times a week you maintain or do you maintain the court at all over there by mark i'm not sure who you were speaking to uh you steve so i'm wondering did you maintain the courts do you go out there and drag them once a week today or or maintain <laughs> we haven't today? been um but we do you know monitor it for debris Okay. And divots and, and that sort of thing. And how often, Joe, do you replace the nets? Is it every five years, three years, one year? How often do you replace them? Um, not to be not to be rude, but the nets that are out there are probably the ones that. Oh, well, I know they are. They're very, very old. No, no, just a bit. <laughs> I'm in high school. Um, the nets that we're putting in will. <laughs> no, I'm saying so. They're considerably longer, and they're a lot easier to uh, take down. You take the nets down and if you wanted to store them so that way they're not getting beat up in the winter time with the snow and the ice. Okay. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> so uh, any other questions? And um... So I, I guess the one question is, is there any money? I, I, I doubt there's a separate budget line for beach sand. Is there, Steve? There is not. That's, so, that's why I, I mean, said, I, you know, that, <clears throat> that's the only thing I would not have uh, specific funds for. Well, I mean, I, I, you know, I would think it would just come out of, you know, some general Mart's field, um, you know. <laughs> well, there's not much in that line either. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, if the board would just, we could certainly uh, um, do a not to exceed you know, any any ballpark, Steve, on how many? Uh... <clears throat> well, it's it's forty to forty dollars a ton. Uh, I believe a truckload is going to be about thirty tons. Um, is that twelve hundred or is that? Uh... That's right. Yeah. yeah. So somewhere in that in that uh, area. So why don't you? Uh, do but I don't know if that that's a delivery. I don't I don't think that included delivery. I think that's just the the cost of the sand. The trouble is that it comes from Long Island. So, no. um, so maybe we said not to. There's going to be a trucking fee on there, too. Maybe are there, are too there too. any other towns that have this sand in their volleyball areas that we could possibly do a share? I think that pretty much all of them that have volleyball courts have mm -hmm. beach sand. 
How many, no. Joe, Jessica, do you know? I know, Joe, there's out in East Fishkill, they have beach East volleyball. Fishkill. Yep. Yeah, um, other than past East Fishkill, I'm not sure who else has them. And East Fishkill also has beaches. So yeah. I, I can check with- uh, That Dr. would be something we could maybe do jointly, to keep the course down. Yeah, I would, I would say at least to start, Dick, I think 2000 is probably enough. That's what I was thinking. Not to the number. Yeah. So I would suggest that we, you know, approve, authorize the uh, signing of the agreement, Jim, you know, for the supervisor to do that, and then an expense item not to exceed 2000 And And uh, Angela, I will contact uh, Nick D'Alessandro tomorrow. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Hey, Mike, and everyone does... is okay with, with dropping down to two courts for now? Yeah, I am. I have no problem with that. I know. I wonder, um, Mike, does does Thal use um, sand in their mix down in um, the quarry? Or is it all just aggregate? Yeah, I'm not sure, uh, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I think their sand at, at Thal is manufactured sand. Okay. Because I know right. between and Philcom, we could talk to some of the vendors in the area. I'll move to authorize the contract. I have a second. 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 Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Extensions? Aye. On the motion passed. Thank you, Joe. We Thank will. you very much. Thank Aye. you, Joe. This is going to be really great for everybody. Thank you. Take care, yes. Joe. Take care. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Also, uh, one additional motion I think we should do is I move to authorize the supervisor of buildings and grounds to make the necessary alterations to the fields or, or to the courts uh, as as uh, as needed for this program. So they're compliant with the uh, regulation. I'll second that. A okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. 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 Yes, thank you, Bill. Okay, next item is we'll continue our discussion with the opening of you know, of town hall, you know, this, you know, we had talked about actually, earlier. um, to Bill's point, just to add for the record, um, that it's a type two action under seeker. Okay. Move to amend my motion, authorizing okay. the supervisor of buildings and grounds to make the necessary alterations to the courts on our property. Uh, and also note, this is a, a type two secret action. I'll second it again. All in favor. Aye. Aye. The nays are abstentions, <clears throat> and the amended resolution passed. Thank you. So now to town hall, well, we can continue the discussion. Uh, Angela, what are your thoughts? My thoughts on opening town hall, I agree with Councilman Beal with regard to the uptick and where we are right now. And I think May 1st is a good, a good day to look at how where we stand. I know quite a few people that are under quarantine right now. They had difficulty getting the shots and um, unfortunately, uh, it is what it is. So I, I agree we should wait and not open right now. Any, any other you know, thoughts? Well, I think on, on April 26, when we have our next meeting, we reassess at the point in time. And if May 1st is the right date, that's when we open it up. But you've got another couple of weeks to go in between. Let's see what the numbers are. As Bill said, I mean, they've gone down day to day. I hope they're going to improve significantly over the next, you know, couple of weeks, or at least improve. And as long as they're going in the right direction, I think you make a call at the uh, April 26 meeting as to whether you open up May 1st or we need to extend that to a later date. You know, keep keep in mind that you know we are still at actually high numbers historically and where we ever were before, and the number of uh, you know, infections uh, it has been uh, still fairly steady based on the. You know numbers. You know our county executive did state uh, earlier today that they know they just don't have the testing capability to determine how much of this very infectious variant is. The other point that I, I do want to make is that as of I think it was last week, uh, the statistics on the number of deaths, the fatalities, regrettable fatalities in our town was the highest of any municipality in the state. You know, we had 23, you know, deaths that had been recorded. Uh, so, so my comment was not to open it up on the 26th. My comment was to review it on the 26th. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's, discuss it. Right. 
had said before too. And we reassessed on the 26th, not open on the 26th, but the door clear. Exactly. I agree. I agree. And so uh, if I could just say, I think that uh, we all have um, constituents that have uh, mentioned to us that there is an upcoming public hearing uh, for the planning board that is scheduled for May 3rd. I know I've gotten a number of emails and phone calls uh, with questions about if the town hall will be open. And my response to them has been that I don't know if we're gonna be open uh, for that uh, particular uh, public hearing. But that being said, I spoke to the supervisor earlier. I do think we should perhaps contact the school district and see if the Wappagers Junior High School Auditorium is available uh, for that public hearing because that space is much larger and gives individuals the opportunity to uh, social distance. Because even if we do open the town hall on May 1st, uh, having upwards of 100 people attend a public hearing, uh, it's going to be very challenging to do uh, and follow the CDC guidelines. So uh, I'm not sure what the school district's position would be, but I think we should at least explore that option at this point. Barbara and I had had several discussions and we'll, we'll, we can discuss it some more uh, a little bit later on, but Barbara, had you made any contact with the school district? No, I had not. I had heard that they wouldn't let the board of ed have meetings, but that was a few weeks ago. So I'll, I'll, I'll contact the uh, superintendent, uh, Dwight Bonk, you know, on that tomorrow. I'd, yeah, I'd like to just say that we do need to know very shortly because if it's going to be held somewhere other than town hall and it's not going to be held in person, we need to know to send out public hearing notices since it's being amended and also to get it in the paper. So time is somewhat uh, delicate here. What's the deadline, Barbara? Uh, hold on, let me just look at a calendar with glasses on. So the third 20, so by the 19th, we really need to know to get that into the newspaper in time and also for the uh, clients, the applicants to send out the certified return receipt. I'd actually like to send them out a little earlier. The mail has unfortunately been taking much longer and some of our return receipts are not appearing at people's doors till the day or two after the meetings. And I would hate for that to happen on this particular item. So I'd like to get them out as soon as possible. And I know you can't answer that, but um, Richard and I have been talking about having a TV outside uh, as well as inside. I know the planning board would like it in person, uh, but whatever you decide, we just will have to make decisions rather quickly. The, what does the planning board have to say, Barbara? The planning board members really want this in person. They find Zoom difficult in yeah. the sense that you really don't get the full flavor from all the uh, showing of the projects. Uh, but I will tell you that I am expecting enormous numbers of people. There are petitions out, there's flyers. Um, it's been in papers. So we have to prepare in advance not only to be inside where we can't accommodate many people, but to accommodate them perhaps outside with a big screen and also so they can sit in their cars on uh, watching it. And then we can bring them in one at a time, like have them queued to speak, because I think a lot of people will want to speak on this. Yeah, I've reconfirmed with uh, the county executive's office earlier today that while the uh, occupancy requirements have been raised some to allow up to 50% you know, occupancy in a room, but you still must observe the six foot you know, distance you know, requirements that was confirmed earlier. So you know, we still don't have many spaces available uh, in, in that area. Also, I, I wanna remind everyone, you know, when we looked at the inauguration uh, back in January, 2020, uh, you may recall that there is no cable capability within the junior high school. You know, we weren't able to set up anything that could broadcast it around so that, uh, you know, we could you know, talk with Mike Miner to see if there's any uh, other uh, option, but uh, that was a limiting factor back then. Uh, Mike did, Mike, if I can interrupt, Mike did send me an email today. Instead of a TV outside, he can do a projector, uh, project the meeting with speakers. 
So we're really trying to think outside of the box right. if we have to do it at town hall. Uh, with respect to the school district, recently they had a pro they had a policy where third parties, you know, non they would not um, open their space up. Um, However, uh, safety is paramount here. I, right. I'm not an advocate of doing anything on that level on Zoom. I, I've been watching the proceedings on Zoom and it's very challenging for the public to uh, participate. Uh, and I, uh, I see the comments and I understand the frustrations and folks just need to understand that we're trying to accommodate everyone in a safe manner. So if it means setting up speakers and, and televisions outside and then having a having an individual, uh, you know, coordinate who's going to go to the microphone next. Maybe, maybe that is the best option. Um, but we should obviously, uh, have a plan in place for legal notice posting. Yeah. And, and Barbara and I have discussed that bill and I think, you know, as to that option, uh, and the way that she's been structuring it, it probably is the best way if we can't get some other indoor facility like the junior high school so uh, Barbara's put a lot of thought uh, into it uh, as to what you know we should do including you know safety security control etc you know that we can talk about later if the uh, if the junior high is available um, and we're able to accommodate the number of people that can properly social distance and wear face coverings uh, I understand we can't connect in real time to cable but we certainly would be able to uh, Record it and rebroadcast it so that p the public that couldn't uh, couldn't be there can can see it. Yeah, or so. you know, I guess if you know, Barbara and I were a little bit concerned about inclement weather. You know, we could I guess always get a couple of tents too outside. You know, to, to do that. Except yeah, but we certainly can. Jessica has a lot of uh, suppliers for. Uh, you know, party tents type of situation. So you know, we'll continue to look at it, but I'll get back to the board after I've talked with the uh, superintendent of schools. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we'll talk about Earth Day. Uh, Joey Cappuccini, uh, I think is here back from his legislature meeting. Yes, I'm here. Hold on one sec, supervisor. Apologize for that. I just had to leave the room, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm up at my legislature meeting tonight, so uh, uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to keep this brief. Uh, in the past, the town of Wappinger, we have hosted Earth Day uh, cleanups, which has been a townwide event, which has uh, been made up of volunteers, uh, scout troops, students. Uh, elected officials, town employees, so on and so forth, have come forward to clean up a number of different town streets and parks, gateway signs, Hamlet Center, so on and so forth. Uh, this year, we're hoping to have our Earth Day cleanup on Saturday, April 24th, starting at 10 a.m. at Wappinger Town Hall, which would be the starting point for the kids to get their cleanup tools, uh, for the volunteers to get vests and things like that. Um, in the past, we've had food donated uh, either by uh, local pizzerias or by town board members. Uh, but tonight, we just wanted to get a consensus from the town board if there are any streets in particular that you would like to have cleaned, any town parks in particular that you would like to have cleaned or focused on on this day. Uh, of course, it all depends on how many volunteers we can get. Um, and then, you know, that then determines how many places that we get to hit but we're just gonna open up to the town board to see if you had any suggestions or recommendations for the event. Well, you know my concern with Myers Corners Road between Route 9 and uh, Losey Road. I know Amen. I, know <laughs> I understand it's a county road, um, and I would argue that much of that debris blows out of Wappinger Plaza, uh, but if there's any way we can address that in some way, shape, or form, I'll be happy to assist. Absolutely. And, uh, and Councilman, I had sent out an email last week to DPW Commissioner Bob Balkine urging the county DPW uh, to clean that up. Every year they usually do a Earth Day cleanup of several county roads. I pressed this very strongly and actually followed up again. 
so if that does not get cleaned up by this date, uh, we can send out a group and uh, would happy would be happy to have you if, as a part of it, Councilman. He had, uh, Commissioner Balkine did acknowledge that and was looking into it based on the master schedule and the way, you know, our discussions have gone. If they're not able to do it, then we certainly would be able to. So, yeah. I think Also, one thing I did not mention uh, as well was CPL has graciously donated uh, T-shirts, first come, first serve to the first volunteers as they've done the past three years now. So volunteers will be given a T-shirt courtesy to CPL. And we have different sizes, you know, correct, Joey, from uh, yes. small children's to uh, what, triple X or is it double? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we covered all the sizes. Actually, during last year's cleanup, we had a group of uh, Brownie Girl Scout troops. So uh, kindergarten, first grade girls uh, that went to Carnwath and picked up garbage and they all got their shirts and uh, and they fit pretty well. <laughs> so we even got down to that size. So please get in any suggestions that you might have from uh, your different locations within within the town uh, as to that uh, cleanup, okay? Yeah. Joey, how's the cemetery out on Robinson Lane? I actually drove past that on Saturday. Uh, it looked okay. Again, you know, things haven't grown up since then. Uh, we did yep. clean that back in September time frame. Um, so mm -hmm. it still looked okay. I think that we just need to continue to monitor that cemetery moving forward as you know we go into the summer and the growing season well, um, we, can, we yeah. still have a lot of the big brush out there too that hasn't been removed i mean we, uh, i, I know, believe I that you, most chris myself and maloney were all out there yeah. last year taking care of that cemetery and we still have a lot of stuff that's still out there they he was good enough I, to take care of all the bags and stuff yeah. uh, uh, yes all the bags and, and all the, the the debris has mostly been cleared except for some large trees um, that were cut up, um, but for the most part, Councilman, yes, you're right. We had a huge group out there. I believe also Boy the Scouts. Uh, Boy Scouts from uh, Troop uh, 145 from Houstonville came out as well. Correct. Um, we cleaned up a lot, uh, but I do believe that there are some larger logs that are laying around. But for the most part, uh, the bags, the small brush has been had been removed. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and and also, if that if uh, the town board would like to focus on that cemetery again or one of our two other burial grounds slash cemeteries, we can we can also focus efforts there as well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how the back of Middlebush looks at this point. It could it could use some uh, could use some help. Definitely I got, could use some uh, help. I think I, I think all the wards could use help and mm -hmm. um, it should be coordinated that way with all the wards. So, so can we can we ask the residents maybe you know, send in the suggestion if they have a road. I know it's probably going to be a huge list, but, you know, try to pick, based on volunteers, pick some of the, the roads that need it more than other roads. I mean, we, I have, we have done that in the past, it, like in particular, Councilman, uh, uh, River Road North okay. was brought up as a road of, of concern uh, with, that we received from a resident, as well as Spook Hill Road, also from a resident. Um, okay. But yes, uh, yeah, and, and as we get them in from the residents, uh, we do tend to send them out uh, to those areas as well. We also had a resident that raised the question of whether or not we could clean up that, at least uh, the lot abutting the road and uh, Chase, you know, the bank, you know. Yes, along Myers Corners Road there, yep. Who owns that, but it's uh, really bad, you know, as far as the debris there. So a resident has raised that to my attention as yes. well. well. And that was brought up with the... Yep, yep. 9D is awful also, if you see all the trash in the town on 9D, but we can't do anything about that, but it is a mess. Yes, technically uh, with state roads, I, I believe uh, Jim Horan can even give some more uh, detail with this. We're technically not permitted to do cleanups on state roads. We need special permission since they're adopt the highways. I even believe Councilman Beal has a section of 9D uh, through the village there that he adopted. So uh, that, uh, but we can bring that up to, uh, to state DOT and, so and bring, send them an email. There's a state highway DOT permit required for going out there. And this, this kind of segues to my next point. Um, the reason why they have a permit process is for liability purposes. And I bring this okay. up each year. Um, you know, do, what is our process by which individuals are volunteering their time on behalf of the town? Uh, is there a registration process? Um, uh, is there, uh, you know, Jim, did we ever close the, uh, the gap on uh, insurance covering these individuals? Uh, because I do have uh, concerns about people being on roadways 
uh, uh, as as uh, working on behalf of the town? What what level of uh, protection do we have? So I believe two years ago, uh, actually former superintendent of highways, Bettina had asked for this to be created. Uh, Wallace and Wallace developed a waiver uh, for all town volunteers. They all have to be registered at town hall, be part of the event. Uh, we have their phone number. We know exactly where they are. We monitor, we check in with them. Uh, on that note as well, once they sign the waiver, then they go out. Um, I believe Wallace and Wallace confirmed that they are covered under our volunteer liability insurance as well. Um, that we, we did confirm all that, but yes, and all waivers are kept on file after that. that Sarma in summer. Joey, when you get a second, if you can unshare your screen so I can see everybody else. Yes. That would be good. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so Jim, relative yeah. to individuals that are picking up trash as part of this program on a town roadway, uh, they would be uh, covered in some way, shape or form um, for their volunteering. Is that correct? It, it is, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, the town has to take certain precautions with respect to it. Also, um, you know, the recommendation is that the people get, be given, you know, a safety briefing before they go out. I think in the past they've been given um, uh, safety vests. Correct. Right. Um, you know, to the extent, and I believe there's been, you know, cones and things in the road. Uh, I wouldn't advise, you know, the, the, the daisies to be out on the road. I think, you know, Cornworth Farms is, and the parks are certainly um, uh, better spots. I would not, um, I would not have minor children out on the highways. Right. Right. Um, and then also, you know, to the extent you stay away from the narrow roads, um, narrow town roads with, you know, no shoulders, um, you're better, all, you know, obviously the big, the, the bigger the road, the um, more right of way, the better, um, the better it is for the town. And yes, they are covered, you know, on the, uh, on the town's liability policy. Yeah, and we, we, as Joey said, we started two years ago with the waiver of liability and right. checking with our insurance uh, you know, brokers on that. So, but we do. Yes, and it, if we can be very careful about, you know, who's on roads and who's in parks. Um, I mentioned last year, tragically, there was a, a Girl Scout that was killed during one of these Earth Day cleanups uh, in somewhere in the country, uh, struck by a vehicle. So um, if we can, you know, keep the younger uh, individuals, obviously, off the roads and in the parks, and then folks that, uh, you know, have parents attending or whatever, as long as they're properly uh, uh, protected, and I think we use the highway department to uh, uh, to protect them, uh, it would... I would feel more comfortable if if we have uh, uh, those precautions in place. I agree. I agree totally. Mike, has, has, are, are you going to be a part of this, Mike, in your group and the Recreation Committee? Are they part of this also? We have no recreation. The recreation area. Can you all hear me? Hi, Mike. Yes. Yeah, hi. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't worry about the town roads. I send guys out once a week on every ward. Um, I, agree, I agree that Myers Corners Road is in bad shape in 9D from from uh, from the court, uh, Houstonville all the way down. But our roads are in pretty good shape. I send them out, like I said, uh, I send a few guys out to take care of the runs and, and pick up all the garbage, everything they see out there. Great. So if you want to concentrate on it, the county roads and the state, um, I will continue to do our roads. And I have to say, the Town of Wappinger Highway Department has done a fantastic job. That's why we usually every year get a lot of complaints. Uh, this year, we, we received minimal. I mean, the only two was Spook Hill and, and River Road North there. Uh, but really, the Highway Department has taken care of a huge bulk of this. Mike, would you have any, well, uh, North any people that could help with this endeavor? Yeah, it's usually myself and my daughters come out and I get a few highway went. A highwayman to do it. Thank you. Um, North River Road is a problem area because straight friction started. So I sent a guy, I sent a group of guys down there, uh, like on a Monday because they fish all weekend and we pick up all their trash. That's one probably one of the worst areas. Yeah. Because of the straight fishing. I agree. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So um, if you're going to be doing work on the uh, county roads, I believe they've got a 
a permit process or some notification process. So um, if you if if they plan to do a cleanup on the county roads, you got to uh, coordinate with Dutchess County DPW. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Uh, let's move on uh, to the uh, Eagle Scout project. Joey, you want to talk about Middle Bush Cemetery and the Scout project? And I think you uh, we have uh, our scout with us. So yes. Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Supervisor. Uh, tonight we have Jared with us. He is a soon to be, hopefully with this project, Eagle Scout. Uh, his father and he uh, came into my office and met and uh, we came up with a, a couple good ideas uh, for Eagle Scout project for him, and that ended up being uh, Middle Bush Cemetery. Uh, as you know, a couple years back, we had a Girl Scout troop take care of Middle Bush Cemetery. Uh, Tommy Mosh of Mama's Towing led an effort uh, to clean up Middle Bush Cemetery. Uh, now, what we're gonna be hopefully doing is uh, cleaning it up and doing some more beautification of it. Uh, and I will let Jared get on the line and explain his project more. So Jared, if you want to unmute yourself and uh, turn on your video, you can present to the town board. Um, uh, hello, I'm Jared Terzian. I'm a Boy Scout from Troop 3026, and uh, I'm trying to earn my Eagle Scout rank. Uh, I would like to do my service projects for the town at the Middle Bush Cemetery, as Mr. Cavicini said. Uh, the project will be done in like three phases. I'm gonna start off by doing a cleanup of like all the leaves and dead branches on the floor. Cause uh, I like the street level. It appears to be clean, but there's a little hill in the back and it's a pretty big like cleanup to do. Uh, once I finish the cleanup, I'm gonna have a separate weekend where I'll, I'll install a sp split rail fence about 125 feet long. Uh, in front of a cemetery. Uh, in the third phase, I will make and install a kiosk not too far from the flagpole with information about the cemetery and graves provided by Mr. Pepicini. This information will be put in front of the kiosk covered in plexiglass and would be permanent unless you uh, take the screws out and remove the plexiglass. The back is going to be split in half, one half with a small bulletin board and the other half a glass case where you can go in and out with a lock and key. It will be very similar to the kiosk at the Roundabout Rural Cemetery. And uh, if I do get the approval to start, uh, I'll get the fundraising going and start the cleanup right away because I'm only allowed to start the fundraising after approval. Uh, I have some pictures, but I don't know how well we'll come out on the camera. Uh, actually. This is of the cemetery in the back. I don't see downhill. anything at this point. And there's no yeah. picture out there. I think your camera's off. My camera's off? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh. Yeah, we can't see you, Jared. Uh, I apologize for that. I thought it was working. Uh, I had a physical copy of the photos. So. Are you able to turn your uh, camera on? It is on a uh, yeah. To me, it says it's on. Okay. So if it's not showing up, then I don't know how to fix it. That's okay. Um, go ahead and proceed with your uh, presentation. Uh, that, that was it. <laughs> okay. And Jared, actually, if you want to send over anything to me or stop by the office, we can scan over copies of your pictures, your plans, and submit it to the town board, of course, if, if it's not working tonight. Okay. Also, Jared, previously, uh, Mike Jensen of Tractor Supply indicated that they may be willing to donate the uh, split fence posts. So you might want to contact him or Joey or I would be happy to contact him. Uh, he's the manager over at Tractor Supply in, in the town. Okay, thank you. Jared, you're a member of Troop 26. Is that Presbyterian Church in Wappagers? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. And how old are you? I'm 15. Okay. All right. So you got plenty of time. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a proud Eagle Scout myself, class of 1994. Uh, Supervisor Thurston is an Eagle Scout as well from, uh, I'm sure, a few years before my <laughs> Eagle Scout. From New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I was 17 years old and 364 days when I finally got my Eagle Board review done. So it sounds like you're way ahead of the game here. Um, certainly appreciate you uh, putting this uh, application together. And um, uh, that happens to be in uh, uh, my ward. So I certainly would be uh, interested in uh, uh, seeing exactly what your plans look like. So I'm sure uh, uh, Joey Cavasini can assist you with uh, scanning those over to the board so we can take a look at what your ideas are and what your plans are. Uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to be here and I'll make a motion that we authorize the Eagle Scout candidate to move forward. I'd like to okay. second that. Okay, motion and second, all in favor. Aye. 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 These are abstentions. Seeing none, motion passed. Thank you, Jared, you know, very much. We look forward to talking with you some more and seeing the progress made. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, next item, uh, moving on to uh, Steve Frazier. You know, Steve was going to talk about you know, Robinson, uh, you know, Lane, you know, the bathroom facilities as we had uh, discussed briefly earlier. So Steve, you know, why don't you just share with the board? <laughs> Well, it, it sounds like we've come up with an alternate plan. Um, my intent there was to install a maintenance-free uh, floor covering on there that you know would last about 20 years. Um, but you know that was to take away from our list of things to do the the routine maintenance of that floor. But if there are um, volunteers that are going to take care of that for us, then I guess it's a, a moot consideration. Yeah, so, so you know, based on, again, what we've talked about with a little ignorance, thank you, Steve, for going out and giving the information, but it uh, looks like we're just going to, you know, get it painted, make it look a little bit nicer, um, and try to redirect the, the funds over to the, the challenger field. Um, there have been, again, uh, from the stand, no real complaints at all about the the floor and the fact that you know the paint and everything else is missing so uh, again thank you for for pulling this together uh, i do appreciate it but um at this point in time i think the, the better and more prudent move is move is to you know take care of uh, the challenger field first and then we can always revisit this in another time but i think on this one we're gonna we're gonna pass this round but you know i would like though to add that one area that I have received a number of complaints uh, is really with respect to the walkway leading to the bathroom. Yeah, you know, uneven, you know, broken. Yeah, asphalt. Yes, I agree. Asphalt. And I think we really should look at that. You know, it's a, a real problem uh, for you know, anybody that has a little bit of difficulty in walking or drags their feet. You know, seniors, uh, when we have the annual senior picket picnic out there, I don't know what the county is doing this year. Uh, maybe a little bit too early to say, but, uh, you know, I've had to help, you know, seniors, I'm sure everybody has. So that's an area that I really do think, uh, Councilman, that we need to look at and fixing up, you know, maybe for Steve to get back to us with uh, uh, an estimate of what that might cost. To, to I, I agree. I, I agree. Uh, it's surprised. This is a safety issue, and I think we need to take care of that. So I don't know if that's Steve, if that's you, if that's Mike Chan. I assume that's you, Steve, but if there's something we can do there, get us an estimate and try to, because it is very uneven in front of the bathrooms, as you know, Dick said earlier. So I'd like to try to get that fixed as well. If we I'll, can. I'll take a look at it and, and see what needs to be done and then uh, come back with the report on it and what the Great. Options. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Tim, uh, you want to review with us the village water connection? Uh, we've had a uh, you know, some discussion internally. Also, the uh, new mayor, you know, Rick Serino, has raised it a couple times. Uh, the village has some concerns that, you know, they want to try to get uh, that emergency water connection uh, up and uh, installed relatively soon. So, Tim, why don't you, uh, you know, uh, review for the board, you know, what what uh, we had discussed it sometime in the past, but bring us up to date, please. Good thing. Good evening, everyone. So I received a call from KC Engineering. Uh, this is related to our uh, intermunicipal grant where the town and the village have a shared grant for water interconnects. Um, the village is fed by three wells. One of them apparently has an iron and manganese uh, issue. So KC is in the process of designing a uh, filtration plant. According to them, it's about 90% complete. Um, their filtration plant budget is about 1.5 million for construction costs. That's separate from this village interconnect, 
uh, the town and the village worked uh, over probably the past year to come up with a uh, intermunicipal agreement for water usage. And I believe, and Jim may give more detail, but it was, you know, the caveat was for emergency use. Um, and uh, KC is about pretty much ready to go to bid on this interconnect for the benefit of the village. Um, you know, they're offering up the uh, water main connection from, I think it's Aladdin Court to Beacon. Uh, and, you know, they just basically need a pressure reducing valve uh, to reduce the town pressure to their nominal system pressure. Um, in, in Casey acquiring a DOH approval, it came to light about this emergency use agreement. And the recent request was, could the town provide a letter to the village basically stating that the town has excess water capacity that could sustain the village? And I started asking questions about, you know, the context of such, such a letter, uh, mentioned the emergency quotes in the uh, water use agreement, but it would seem the underlying issue is the health department would want some reliability that the town could, could sustain the village for quite some time. Um, and time, you know, being the big question mark. So obviously I was reluctant to go ahead and uh, basically give up the town's excess capacity for a condition that's unknown, could never happen, or if it did happen, you know, for an indefinite amount of time. So I alerted the supervisor uh, and thought it best to uh, basically convey this situation to the board and, you know, see the opinion and basically how we move forward on this topic. The, the original concept, as you may recall, was to uh, have an emergency hookup with that in the event of another cataclysmic fire or that they needed to drain their tanks to do some cleaning or repair work that would be, say, a matter of a couple days, then we could, you know, handle it. Because certainly we have, you know, water supply, you know, that could do it. Uh, my my concern is, and I have not had a chance to talk with the, the new mayor because he was uh, under the weather for a little while, uh, is that uh, since uh, they're not really trying to define what is an emergency by length of time. If it was a full out emergency and we had, what was it you said, Tim, 500,000 gallons? Uh, well, I asked what their uh, average daily demand was and was quoted under 500,000 gallons per day. So, you know, if we were to use up our supply, which we do have you know, for that amount, we wouldn't be able to extend, you know, water, you know, uh, anywhere else, you know, in the town. So that, raises some flags to me. I still don't see a problem with a very short term, but I guess, Jim, you know, we would you know, probably need to define fairly clearly what an emergency is for what extended period of time, which I don't think we want, my own opinion, have a real extended period of time. Well, and, and with respect to that, the reason why this is framed as an emergency interconnection agreement, um, and we had this discussion pretty early on, was that um, in order to do that, we would need a uh, we would need a new water supply permit from DEC. If the connection was done on a intermittent or emergency base, temporary or intermittent or emergency basis, um, it wasn't. It would not be required. So that was that was the rationale be for all of those reasons. If we were going to make a long term commitment to supply the village with water, um, then we would need to get approval from um, from New York, from DEC water supply. Um, so that's the reason why the, the agreement was drafted in the way that it was. It was contemplated that, um, you know, as, as Dick had mentioned, if they were gonna take their uh, tank offline, the storage tank offline um, for uh, repairs, uh, then we would do it. Um, you know, I, I, um, but I, I don't, I don't think, you know, again, if it's how long do they have an estimate as to how long the, the well, are they doing all the wells or they would, would they be doing one well at a time? 
My understanding is a filtration plant that's 90% designed would be capable of filtering all three wells. So the, so the entire water supply, even though I think one of the three wells is problematic. Or I, maybe I, one of the three wells is extremely problematic and the others are just problematic. And, I don't know. The you know, question is, and I know, again, I know that it has some real challenges ahead, but from a financial point of view, they're pretty strapped for money and I just don't want to, you know, throw up and agree, you know, that we'll be supplying water for some extended period of time where that would, you know, really hurt our development. Again, we want to try to help the village wherever we can, but I think we need to be careful with how- Again, we, we can't supply the village, we legally can't supply the village for an extended period of time without approval from DEC. That's good. So, so this, this, this is an emergency interconnect. That's what this was framed as from the beginning. And uh, I have absolutely no objection to us connecting the Village of Wabager's water supply to our water supply at Losey Road and Myers Corners Road for emergency purposes. Um, however, if it's going to be a long-term obligation, it's no longer an emergency. And that's a totally different scenario. My, my understanding from speaking to other individuals is that they, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, the village may be in a position where they need to erect a water tower and they're trying to prevent uh, that from having to happen by using this connection. Is that accurate? My understanding was they were going to use this connection like if they took their own water tower tank offline to do maintenance or what have you. I haven't heard a requirement to build a new one. Um, it should also be noted that my understanding second hand or third hand is that there is a another interconnect with the town of Poughkeepsie. Uh, so it's not as that is that is correct. They used to get they used to get water from um, the Delavern Avenue. Yeah, Delavern Avenue through, you know, joint water board and you know, there were issues with chloramines and you know that was a big issue yeah. in the village. Yeah, you know, when you start mixing surface water treatment with groundwater treatment, it doesn't right. Matter. So they, they were receiving water from the town of Poughkeepsie uh at one point and it was shut off when the village went to chloramine. Now they went to UV. Uh I think that still exists as an emergency connection on that side of the village. That's on the yeah. north side. Uh, however, in this particular case, uh I think we need to be very careful with how this is um uh articulated because there's a big difference between an emergency situation and sustaining uh, a required amount of gallons per minute for uh for you know development over there i mean if you look at the history of that area of the village the irony in this whole thing is that was a water a water annex back in the 60s um all that area behind uh hannaford uh was was water annexed into the village so that they could build it and utilize the village water system. So now if the village water system is not, uh, uh, you know, up to par and they need to utilize our water, uh, that's not an emergency in my opinion. Hey, great. So, so Tim, a lot of this depends on they're getting their, their plant up and going. And then it depends on their, uh, fragile wells is that a good way to put it so <laughs> those directly affect us obviously and then my question is from a legal point of view if we do accept the emergency and i agree with bill if, if it is an emergency we should offer it but jim if we are supplying them water and all of a sudden it turns into a long term are we still legally obligated to keep the water turned on Again, the issue, you know, so this was the, the reason why this was framed as an emergency interconnection agreement was that DEC would not allow us to supply the village water um, for a long term commitment unless we demonstrated that we had sufficient capacity to do so. Um, and as the agreement was currently is currently drafted um, because it's on emer on an emergency basis, um, there needed to, there did not need to be any approval from DEC. Um, we can look at the issue of how long, you know, DEC and DEC probably has some um, standards as far as you know how long that 
that connection can last. And I don't believe, you know, historically in the village, the village, I, do, I don't think the village wants, vill you know, town water. Um, they, you know, have um, gone out of their way. They spent a lot of money to build that plant and to rehabilitate those wells um, because they did not want water from the town of Poughkeepsie. Um, and that was a big, big issue in the village. They spent a lot of money on that plant. Um, and probably over, you know, the advice of certain parties, um, for them to not do it, that, you know, the wells had some challenges. So this is, you know, this was a, a step that the, the, that the village took, you know, knowing the consequences, the, uh, what we were, you know, as Tim had mentioned, um, this, this, uh, interconnection was designed so that, um, the village could take their water tank up on um, Delaverne um, offline um, to do whatever work needed to be done. Um, and then, you know, they would overnight basically take water supply from the village, from the town, um, complete, you know, whatever maintenance work was required on the tanks. I know there was some internal painting or something like that that needed to be be done as the second water tank um there was a a water tank um that was on paper um associated with the river bend project uh, i believe it was with river bend one um and that water tank um was never built um and basically what what they said was that um, this the uh, the water tank they would need they would only need to build it um, as a backup in essence to the existing uh, tank that they have and to the extent that they um, you know can use this emergency connection to do the maintenance work um, they didn't they could save the money for the second tank that was that was the whole point. Um, of, of this interconnection. And I know that Dutchess County Department of Health was, um, had agreed to, to that framework. Um, you know, the town board has adopted a 202B uh, improvement to fund, um, you know, to fund the connection work. So, you know, the town is in a position right now um, to go forward with, you know, to award the bid to do the connection work. But, okay, then I'll ask Tim a different way. So, if we hook the water up and they don't get their plant up and running for two or three years, are we going to be obligated to have water flowing from us to them because they didn't do things properly? That's the fear that I, I can't okay, answer. That, that. that was really my whole question. I, 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 I want to know if we give them water as an emergency basis, and I agree with Bill, if we need it for a day or two for the tank, this and the other thing, but judging by your soft comments, they are not in a position to get their system up and running quickly. Mayor, yeah, Mayor. when I hear they're 90% complete with a design, you still have to do the 10% for the completion, then you have to go through the approval process. Okay. And so then that, that I guess is with the financial atmosphere, uh, you know, all costs seem to be quite a bit higher these days coming out of COVID or trying to come out of COVID. Um, and I guess, you know, one of, one of the considerations could be is could we stipulate like the length of time that, you know, maybe when the agreement was written in the term emergency was used so that it's maybe a little more clear, but, um, you know. I guess emergency becomes a very relative term, huh? Well, I, I agree. Get it. I agree subject, with you. This is subject to DEC approval. So, okay. but would the DEC put in the restrictions? Yes. So I mean, even if even if we go to an agreement and it's an emergency, it can't go beyond a certain amount of time that DEC can identify. Am I correct? The DEC probably has some standard for how long the emergency can last. Can I mean, you find out? Can you find out if they do have that and let us I, know, please? I mean, in the executive law right now, you know, the, uh, the length of an emergency can be no longer than 30 days. 
there's, but let's face it, if they're, if they're using the water, we're not going to cut them off and, and, you know, they need it. And so I, I agree with you, with Tim, there's, there's some level of hesitation because there's no end point here. Um, you know, but well, the problem you know, a contract, you want to have a, you know, an end date. So the work is complete. And I don't think you're going to see that because it sounds like everything is time consuming the process itself. By the time they get all the approvals, we're not talking 30 days. We're probably talking six months plus. So I, I, I agree. I don't know if putting an end date in there though, is going to help you at all. Even well, though EC says, you have to, do I don't know that that's going to be binding. Well, Maybe they can't go beyond the 30 days, though. If they go beyond the 30 days, they're going to have to revert back to getting their water from Poughkeepsie. Yeah, but right. they turned right. everything well, off. That, and... that would answer it. We would not have to supply them. Well, right right now, their water system is up. It's, right. it's functioning. And, you know, the question is, right now, what, what my understanding from what Tim is saying is they're looking to take their plant offline for a certain period of time. So, you know, right now they're, you know, they, they, they have water supply, right? Well, there's that been, correct just them? clarification, Jim, there's been no talk about taking their plant offline. They really just need this uh, uh, letter to get approval for the interconnect that, you know, all of a sudden there seems to be a new uh, twist to this, you know, and I think it's underwritten because of the sensitivity of their filtration plant and the status that it's in that, you know, they want to be up front and kind of thinking ahead to health department. But I don't like the idea of us uh, committing or implying that we'll commit for some definite period, 500,000 gallons a day, even though we may have it, but we're not going to be able to then supply some of our other areas or developments. Right. Like I agree. That. So, so Tim, let me ask you a question. If you were building this plant for us, and you were, I know you're not deeply involved with the design and all that, but if we said to you, Tim, when are you going to come online? Do you have a ballpark? No. A half a year, a I year? Tell you, but they, I can tell you it can months? be six to eight months from now before the design is done and approved. <laughs> That's just, And now you're going to bid. Okay. Right? And then maybe it's another, I don't know, a year, eight months, a year. I have no, I can't really comment because I don't know all the particulars. Okay, yeah, I, I know you're looking at it from the outside, but you're pretty familiar with this type of stuff. That's why I but asked. These things don't take a ballpark amount of time, so that's good. I mean, I, I like Angela's thought. Let's put it that way. I like Angela's thought in that, you know, could we somehow stipulate, you know, our definition of emergency, and we'll find out for sure from DEC if it is, in fact, 30 days, but maybe we put in this stipulation that, you know, we're under the understanding the village has other avenues to pursue and mm -hmm. maybe, you know, it kind of yeah, behooves like them to not put all of their eggs in, in one basket. So. I think also to Al's point, if they're online and we're their only source of water for X period, whatever you say, say it turns out to be six or eight weeks, we're not going to shut them off if we're their only source of water at that point. Right. That's our fear. And to, to Dick's point, we can't be giving that up because we wouldn't turn it off. He knows that. And we don't want to get into that bind to have to say, we're turning your water off. Because that then we become the bad guys. Mm -hmm. But don't they get water? They can get water supply from Poughkeepsie, correct? The last well, right now, they the don't have a contract with Poughkeepsie. But... The contract they is lapsed. Forced, but they would be forced to get a contract with Poughkeepsie because we would not go over the 30 days. And we could stipulate that if that's what DEC says. Well, I don't, again, I don't even think we could go 30 days. Right. I mean, oh, well, I don't, you know, this is, this is this is a discussion that we need for Mike, with Mike Tremper. I, I would be surprised okay. if we could go five days. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we have the ability to, to supply that amount of, of we don't you know, have. users for that length of time. This was in a, this was a, this storage capability, you know, to do. The, the agreement, the agreement doesn't contemplate supplying the village with water on emergency. It, it contemplates supplementing the, the village's wells okay. for purposes of firefighting capabilities right. or for, um, Again, the situation where overnight they took their storage tank on offline. The wells, they, they, this agreement contemplates their wells being up and running and supplying the village with water. 
This is not an agreement that contemplates the town supplying the village of Wappingers Falls with all of its water demands, you know, for any period of time. Right. Um, so, and, and I don't think we have the, cap the capacity to do that. I mean, this is a, a question for Mike Tremper, but. According to Mike, you know, on a full flow day and not in a drought condition, we may be able to eke that out, but we don't have the storage capacity. So we would be pumping our wells 24 right. seven and that causes other issues. So you're right, Jim. I mean, that's what Mike's told me. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we could do it. You know, we couldn't supply the village for more than a couple of days. Right. My, my understanding on the intent was this was an emergency interconnect that we would utilize only in an emergency for supplemental purposes. Now it has uh, evolved into something that it wasn't originally uh, framed as. So I think we need to um, perhaps uh, the supervisor should meet with the, uh, the, the new mayor and get more specific information on what this intent is. Again, I have no objection to emergency use. I mean, even without the interconnect, if there's a major fire that can connect to our fire hydrant on the corner. So it, it, that, that doesn't make a difference. But the point is uh, having this interconnection uh, in the ground uh, could be useful for true emergencies. So I need more information on this uh, moving forward. T Tim, is, is this just a letter to Dan Keeler regarding the agreement, the, the, the plans that were previously submitted for this work? Yes, that's my understanding, it, but it, it went to a higher level and I, you know, I don't know the context of why, but I, well, I mean, I, you know, the other thing, and I don't know if we've got a, uh, in, we could, I could go back and look at the agreement. I don't have it in front of me, but we could certainly put a cap on how much we, we would supply to the village on an emergency basis. Right. And I think if we just did that and take it to that level, if everybody's comfortable with that, that, I mean, may... if we just say, you know, no more than 20, you know, 20,000 gap, whatever it is, you know, something that Mike Tremper is com comfortable with. But, you know, I mean, I, I, we're not going to supply him a half a million gallons of water a day. Yeah. Right. I, I will, you know, I will go, you know, because he's wanted to talk with me, but he was, you know, fell. Uh, yeah, no. You know, I will talk with Mayor Serino. Uh, this was actually one of his uh, things on his palm card for the election. So I know he has great interest in doing it. So I'll get clarification from him what they're truly looking for. Yeah, I mean, maybe, if, if, maybe you could get with um, Tim and uh, Mike Trumper yeah. and just get a, a better overview for the board and, and let us know your thoughts. I know you, you know, you're, you get into this deeply. So um, between the three of you, maybe you could get yeah. us. Next meeting, we'll do that. I, I wanted Tim to raise this tonight so we'd start thinking about it, you know, and, and be aware of what the uh, potential issues are. So, yes, I agree with you, Bobby Chris. We'll do that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thanks, Tim. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Very good. Thanks. Uh, thanks next Tim. item, we'll have uh, you know Kevin uh, Hawthorne uh, update on the 5K run walk, and then Randy Ross on the uh, memorial, uh, the memorial highway, uh, uh, you know, uh, opening uh, event uh, that is scheduled on the 18th. So, uh, Kevin, are you there? And I am. Um, I'm ready to uh, pretty much summarize the 5K. We are all set. We've uh, consulted with Tommy Mash to uh, transport everything we need to get going, which is uh, pretty much just tables. We've talked to Skechers and um, the Outback to uh, set up tables there. Outback is going to supply uh, fruit cups for probably the end of the 5K. Uh, Outback um, and Skechers is going to uh, just set up a table with uh, some coupons and some some samples. The um, Skechers donated something because they're they're not really going to be giving anything to the race. But the uh, Outback did not donate anything because they are giving something to the race. We have ShopRite and we have Hannaford's donating water. We have currently, as of last night, about 62 people signed up. 52 are for a live race and 10 are for virtual. We, um, I'll see in the morning exactly how many more we picked up today because it's a day behind. Um, like I say, we are very well set up on everything. We're planning on showing up there at about 6.30 in the morning just to set up. The uh, Outback people are going to show up about 7.30. Uh, 
then the uh, the race will we're anticipating the the runners are going to start at 7:45. That's what we anticipate. We're anticipating as well to have a beautiful morning, a beautiful day. Uh, two weeks ago, the 17th was not looking very nicely or very nice uh, because of the cold and the rain that was expected. But what we're looking at now is some very, very nice weather. Fingers crossed. Uh, what else? We have everything set up. We have um, the town, the uh, county has given us the okay to go. We have the sheriffs have been uh, contacted to give us uh, some coverage. We have a porta potty out there. And um, I oh, guess that's about it. Hopefully, the questions that follow on onto what I'm saying are not terribly uh, detailed. So let me have all of your questions. You have the uh, major roadrunner, you know, clubs, you know, signed up. What's the involvement in, with them? You were talking about two clubs before. Right. We uh, I reached out to both of them and um, we have not yet gotten any commitment from them. Every uh, all of the signups that we have are at best three people at a time. Okay. So we have not gotten any communication from any of the Roadrunners clubs. Okay. And we're not terribly surprised about that because uh, I reached out to people on the telephone and got absolutely no commitment. So maybe next year. Okay. What about COVID protocols? COVID protocol is that people will be wearing masks until they run. If they want to wear masks while they run, that's totally uh, understandable. But um, we're maintaining social distances. Anybody? So the course I see starts at Lake Walton Trailhead. And what does it go north? Where does it, it goes, go? It goes north to Didel, which is a mile and a half, and comes back to the starting point. Now, okay. the, the roadrunners have used that course umpty up numbers of times it has been um has been measured out professionally i i did it using a, a one of jessica's uh, measurement tools and i come back to the same exact place they have a turnaround point that's different from what i got i go about uh, maybe 20 yards more than what they do uh so um, i'm perfectly willing to set up a table at the turnaround and say that uh, this is what the professionals did it, that's really, um, uh, Tim, I'm not, not using your name in vain, but it's a pretty moot point uh, where we set up our, our turnaround. We do plan on having the uh, turnaround stock with water and a table and people, um, not necessarily with uh, loudspeakers, but uh, just people standing there telling them to, all right, you've gone as far as you're going to go now, turn around, and, turn around and go back home. So anything else? Has there been any consideration about having an ambulance assigned to this? I believe we have EMTs set up uh, on call. Okay. And now um, to answer that question more fully, I, um, I have to declare that I did not set up that and as well as the sheriffs. But when Randy talks about the following day, he can address that in probably 30 seconds. Okay. Anybody else? Bill, you good? I'm good, thank you. Okay, Bill, uh, let me ask you something. Did you advertise this at all on K104? Uh, no, uh, I, I I was not an op. I didn't have an opportunity to do that. But I can. Uh, when is registration closed for this? Uh, the morning of. All right, so I can get it on this week. Okay, I was kind of hoping that one of us got a hold of you, and mentioned it. Uh, it was probably me that was supposed to do it, and I'm sorry, I forgot. I dropped the ball. I'll definitely give it some mentions this week. Terrific, thank you. Just to let you know, Kevin, I did send this out to West Point, my contact there, and also to Castle Point. Beautiful, thank you. You're welcome. Chris, you good? I'm all good. Al, you're good, right? Yeah, I'm good, Kevin, thank you. Thanks for all your help before. All right, very good. Hey, okay. I'll turn it over to Randy then, Kevin, thank uh, you. Sure. All right, good evening, everyone. Let me give you some background. Uh, about a year ago, the supervisor asked Kevin and I to put together a comprehensive uh, program for the year of the veteran. Um, obviously, COVID came and clipped our wings a little bit, but we were able to put together some pretty good uh, events. And one of them is what we're talking about. Um, 
we're calling it the Heroes Weekend. Obviously, the race will anchor all day Saturday. Um, but then, um, thanks to Senator Serino, Assemblyman Lawler, um, the governor was able to sign a proclamation memorializing our section of Route 9 as Wappinger's Veterans Memorial Highway. Uh, and then, thanks to DOT, we were able to get two signs, one on Northern End near Subaru on this road, and one down by Fishkill. Uh, so Sunday's ceremony is unveiling the sign by Liss Road. Um, during the ceremony, we've got a couple of things going on. Um, the supervisor is going to be showing us an artist or an engineer's rendering of the Heroes Plaza, uh, which is going thinking about going in front of Town Hall, um, which will again honor our veterans and our MIAs. Um, Kevin has done amazing work with banners, uh, veterans banners, uh, hometown heroes banners, and bricks. Um, people are, are purchasing both the banners and the bricks, and he will have a table there showing that off. How many banners okay. right now, Randy? Do you know? I'm sorry? How many banners are you up to? Or, you know, Kevin showed me something, but I, I can't remember how many. Kevin, we have 13, I think. Yes, I have 13 ordered, and I've made some final corrections in those, and um, I'm kind of hoping that I can get a two-week turnaround time so that we get them put up uh, by May 1st. I have another three or four that are ready to order now. I went around this afternoon to probably two dozen businesses and got an awful lot of um, offerings for purchasing more, uh, more banners and, and some bricks. But um, I didn't solicit any more sponsorships because I figured it was too late. So there is quite a bit of interest throughout the town in banners. So we are going to have banners galore very shortly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, during the ceremony, we have various speakers. Uh, we have the Dutchess County Sheriff's Color Guard will be there. Um, the end of this ceremony, the conclusion, we have uh, one lane of Route 9 will be shut down. Um, and then we will literally unveil the sign that's down there. And then taps will be played by Danielle Masterson. Um, so the whole weekend is called the Heroes Weekend. Uh, and we feel it is a very, very respectful way of honoring our vets. Any questions? Just uh, want to confirm the times of both of these events. So 7 a.m. is the race on Saturday. Is that correct? Yes. And then 11 a.m., is that the ceremony on Sunday? Yes. Thank you. Sign up for the race starts at 7. The race actually goes off at 8. Okay. Uh, to answer um, supervisor's question about COVID, um, the woman who was running the race with us um, is very, very interested in, in protecting the participants. Um, so, and also... As far as, sun, as Sunday is concerned, we're also having distance and masks. Um, and we really don't expect a large group of people on Sunday. So when they unveiled the sign for the bridge that's right mm -hmm. there um, 10 or 15 yeah. years ago, that's on the median. Uh, that, got yeah. a little, that got a little dicey, that ceremony, um, because people were walking out onto Route 9. This sign is on the shoulder, correct? Yes. And, and you said that they're going to uh, close that lane that's adjacent to the shoulder for yes. additional protection? Yes. Okay. And then in the park at Liss, uh, uh, on Liss Road there, that parking area, is that is that where the ceremony is taking place? Yes. We're going to set up a podium there and a few tables, and people will be in that area. There's also a sidewalk, though, that, that runs along that lake there. And we're going to try to push people in that direction. And parking will be along this road, and people can stand on this road also. Okay. Um, I communicated with the supervisor last week. If we can just make sure that the village officials, uh, most notably John Carge and uh, Ray Chase, are invited uh, since, uh, believe it or not, that's a village park that's outside the boundaries of the village, uh, yep. technically. But... Um, Still, I, I consider it a village park and uh, the new mayor, you know, we should, we should obviously make sure that they don't miss the memo on this. If we have to call them, I want to make sure that they're looped in. 
They're, they're yeah. well. <laughs> of it. And I have uh, Judge Chase speaking. You, yes, Judge Judge Chase is going to speak. Um, and we all we uh, discussed at the meeting today, uh, talking to the new mayor and talking to that that administration. Uh, I went to see the mayor, and, and I guess he was sick, so I never got to see him. But we did leave messages. But I'll uh, make but also I'll get a message to him through Danielle. Good. Uh, we also, uh, my job was also to contact EMS and the sheriff's office, which I'm doing tomorrow morning. And uh, we've gotten confirmation from most of the uh, the folks that we've invited that they're they're really thrilled to be there. So, be a good event. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Randy. Thanks, Kevin. You know, much Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kevin. Great, great job. A lot of hard work going into it. Yeah, so we'll look forward to seeing you then. Yeah, take care. Uh, we'll move into our resolutions We're right now. Resolution, uh, first resolution tonight is uh, resolution 2021-46. This is resolution authorizing the purchase of lift for buildings and grounds. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion in the past. I know that Steve, as he mentioned earlier, has some new figures. Steve, why don't you... Uh, summarize that for consideration and we we decide what we want to do tonight on this right um the machine that i introduced this topic with was sold um you know again we're looking at used machines new cost of a machine of this type is about ninety thousand dollars i've been trying to look at machines in the area of uh, thirty thousand the original one i had brought forward was thirty three thousand um I've been watching eBay. I have four of them here that are within four hours of Wappingers that I have looked at. The lowest cost one is actually the one I think is the best value. Um, it's 24.9 and um, is located in Connecticut about 90 minutes from here. Um, it has 3,600 hours on it. It's a 2005 unit. Uh, the other units, some of them are newer with lower hours, but the travel time uh, is, is a little bit higher. And, and also in the pictures, they appear to be in lesser condition um, than the one that I, I think you know, we would be most interested in. Um, if there's any interest here in moving forward, and if uh, Councilman Phillips would be interested, like I said, it's a 90 minute ride um, we could take a ride over and look at it in person and, and see what we think about it. Steve, are, are you going to be able yourself to go over there and, uh, well, yeah, I would, I would, you know, give, I know. ask him to, to ride with me. Sure. Uh, Councilman Phillips, you know, he can speak for himself, but I know he's been pretty busy. You know, he's right. Sure it's long. I'm yeah. just looking, you know, it's a diesel, right, Sue? Well, that's that's what I'm looking at is diesels um, because we have a diesel tank at the uh, at the shop. Gas engines are going to be a problem for us as far as fueling them. We're going to have to cart the gas in five-gallon five cans from highway department. So uh, diesel works out for us better. So, um, you know, what, what's our you know, preference of moving forward? I know Steve's been pretty patient, and they keep losing opportunities. Uh, you know, and I think you know, why is this? certainly be an asset to our department in getting the work done um, faster and, and, again, safer. You know, we, we do have a need for this unit. Um, you know, I, I can't really tell you anything more than that. What's the total cost again? Uh, the cost of the machine is listed at twenty four nine or best offer. Um, I think, you know, there's going to be a delivery cost on that as well that I think would be under one thousand um, dollars. I checked into it; they get one hundred and twenty five dollars an hour for the truck, so I think um, you know, it'll be well under a thousand to to get there and back. Like I said, it's about ninety minutes away. Figure your load and unload time is probably about an hour. Um, 
So, you know, I, th I think it'd be somewhere between five and a thousand on delivery fee. And uh, this is, um, you know, all the units I'm looking at are what uh, rental companies are selling off as their surplus units. Um, you know, basically most of them well maintained. This one here certainly appears to be in very good condition from the photos. Um, you know, I would like to take a ride over and verify that and, and see it operate. But uh, you know, th th this one here appears to be a, a, a good deal. Like I said, we lost the one that we had been looking at. Um, the next machine that they have available is currently at $42,000. And where would this funding be coming from? Did we determine that or no? <clears throat> well, I would I would need some assistance with that. I do have um, I have I believe about twenty thousand in my equipment fund that uh, could go towards this. And again, what was the total expense for renting a similar device in previous years? <clears throat> with the with the um, transportation included, it's about a thousand dollars a day. And how so here, days? you know, you're looking at less than a month rental days. You know, less less than thirty days rental fees that would cover the cost of this thing here. How many days do we typically rent this item for? Well, I haven't been renting it because I don't have the funds available. Uh, I rent it this past. Uh, this past winter, we had it for a week for the trees, but, um, or the uh, Christmas tree rather, I'm sorry. Um, what did that cost you? About $1,500, $1,800 $1, for that? Is that what the rental fee was for the Christmas decorations? I think it was more than that. I don't have that figure in front of me. Um, <clears throat> you know, but, but it's not the only thing that we would do with this. Again, you know, we have a list of jobs in front of us that would involve having a lift available to us that, that would make the job go faster. It would certainly provide a, a safer work platform than working off of a ladder and would expand what we are able to do here by a significant amount. I mean, it's, it, I don't know if it's just, uh, you know, you, you, you want that list chipped away at the faster we can do that list for you, then, you know, the more we can get done here in town. Steve, part of this you plan to have from uh, uh, DB fund, you know, funding, as I recall, you had uh, discussed that. That's the one where we have, uh, you know, a, you know, a strong fund balance. You know, is that correct? part of it was DB fund? Part of Were you DB asking me? A fund. Steve. Part is A fund. I think part of it was DB fund. You know, wasn't it? Very much, uh, do that for some of the uh, you know, cost. Was that directed to me? Yes. I, I'm not familiar with that end of the budget. I, I believe comment on that? On or where the funds would have to come out of? Sorry. Oh, Fred. I guess Frederick's not on here, is he? Uh, Frederick, you're muted. There you go. Okay. Yes, I don't think that would qualify in the DB because DB is very restrictive. Um, I don't know whether Jim can add a comment on that. The resolution had it so that it was split between DB and A. That's why I was asking. Uh, so, uh, you know, so that was a question as to whether or not it was going to be used by the highway department. You know, DB would be highway department equipment. Um, I don't know, you know, because I know there was a discussion about that. I don't know if there's any, uh, uh, Frederick, are there any recreation equipment lines in B fund? No. Okay, well, it seems like we're still without uh, some questions answered the lack of clarity i would like to see this move along because steve you know uh... <clears throat> we have the trusses coming up to put on the spook hill 
renovation here. Um, and this, this machine is, is, I'm gonna have to rent a machine to do that. Um, you know, we took that project on and uh, it, it has a time limit on it. So as soon as the concrete work is done, then we're gonna start doing the roof on that building. Um, you know, there's other projects on that list that we have going forward that this machine would certainly make the jobs, um, again, move faster and, and safely. Uh, that would, you know, with upcoming um, lighting there at uh, March would, would be part of that. Uh, I don't have that list in front of me, but, you know, the, the number of jobs that we have here that we could use this machine on is virtually endless and it's not gonna, you know, our, my list is changing by the day as well. It, um, you know, it, it'd be a, a, a true asset to the department. I, th I think one of the, uh, and I apologize for being all over the place on my screen. I'm, I was trying to plug my power supply in before this thing died. Uh, <clears throat> I think one of the issues uh, is number one, we, have not had eyes on this particular unit yet to take a look at it, but even assuming it's a $25,000 expense, if we look at what the total cost of a lift has been year over year for rental purposes, uh, it's been a, a fraction of that, it, you know, it, it, to get to 20. I, I understand that, but you know, this, this department here has been evolving since I, I came to work here and we're taking on bigger and bigger projects. We can extend the, the money that you've given us to work with by doing these jobs in house. Dear, and dear uh, team, you know, that just, I'm sorry, I got, I got something going on outside the house here. Okay, uh, your team and you know how to run the, operate the machine? If, excuse ethical me? Ethical training, for training, the ethical training for it, did you know how to operate already the machine? Can, can you that? start that question from the beginning, please? Yeah, sure. So my question was, does your team or you know how to operate the lift or would you have to go through some level of training in order to be able to do that? Um, I know you've, you've operated a lift before the Christmas lights, but what about the rest of your team? Are you, the, are you the only one who's authorized to use the lift? <clears throat> it would be a good idea to have some training, which is available through NYSERDA, I'm sure. Um, Myself and Sal are both familiar with the lifts. We've used them in the past. Um, Sal comes from a, a construction background as well. So it wouldn't be just myself, it'd be Sal as well. And we certainly could train others to, to work with the equipment. Yeah, there's fall protection training you can get and all that. And to Steve's point, you know, on his list of, uh, I think it's now grown to a hundred items, had, uh, 18 items that uh, he had identified specifically that could use the lift. You know, I don't remember those off the top of my head, but uh, that's what he had, including you know, roof repair, you know, tree uh, you know, cutting and a variety of things that he had there. So, um... And if you look at our budget, what we spent in the past on tree service, you know, we're spending like six, $7,000 a year on tree service. With this machine, we can do that work ourselves. Where are you at with manpower, Steve? I'm sorry? Where are you at with your manpower right now? That's what we need to discuss in executive session. <laughs> I'm not in a good place. Okay. All right, so what's the gross cost gonna be on this with uh, delivery and all that? Are we at 30,000 or under? Yeah, we're under, well under 30,000 with this particular machine. I'm thinking, um, Probably around 27. Well, we still have, you right. still have to take a look at the machine though, right? Well, if, yeah, that, that was my proposal, yes. So I don't, I don't know how you agree to a price until you see the machine itself, correct? Well, this is the, the listing on it. You know, we yep. have, that price can be negotiated once they go to look at it. But sure to move, you know, the trouble is I'm, I'm, looking, at a, I'm looking at used equipment. <laughs> with, with new equipment, we know exactly what we're going to get. Right. The price is fixed. We can order it and it'll come in as we expect it to. With used equipment, we have to evaluate every single unit that we look at. And good units at a good price are gonna disappear quickly, which is what happened with the original unit. So, I mean, I, 
we need to, 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 when we find something that is in good shape and a good value, we need to move on it, you know, before somebody else does. I mean, All right, so uh, I'm going to make a motion. We authorize the supervisor of Billions and Grounds to spend no more than $30,000 on a lift with Councilman Phillips and Supervisor Thurston to be uh, providing consensus on which unit we get because we can't sit here under the circumstances and, and have a uh, crystal ball and know what the condition of this thing's gonna be. So as long as those colleagues of ours are willing to be directly involved in this acquisition, I would move, uh, I think that's the best approach uh, from my perspective, not knowing about these things. I know that Phillips uh, has a background in this and I know that uh, Supervisor Thurston has an administrative background in this type of thing. That would be my motion uh, to, to authorize the Supervisor of Billings and Grounds to spend no more than 30000 on this lift with the assistance of Councilman Phillips and Supervisor Thurston, then I have no objection from there. I'm more than willing to help them. Chris, I'm sure you are too, right? Time allowing. <laughs> if I can get some time, I just... The, all, the only last few weeks I've been slammed. I, I would also add to that motion, uh, Councilman Beal, respectfully, uh, uh, what did you say you were short on the, your budget line, Steve? Te, uh, Ten grand. Yeah, somewhere in that area, correct. So an authorization, since uh, it doesn't look like there's consensus to to take it out of the highway fund, to um, increase the budget line for ten grand to get it to the thirty. So I'll further move uh, as stipulated by the town attorney, and okay. uh, I, about to I have a comment under discussion, but that's the motion. There was motion. Is there a second? For it. My computer's dying here. We have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second from other councilmen or women? My computer just died, too. We're going to need his vote if he either way. So let's let's <laughs> let's wait and see if he's going to be there, Chris. I'm here. I just my computer's getting wacky. It's not a Chromebook either. All right, so my motion stands. If I don't get a second, it's dead in the water, but that's where I'm at. And second it, so I'll second it. Okay. And okay, on discussion. So I understand all the points from all different uh, perspectives here. Here's where I'm coming from, okay? Uh, I think that we're really doing no service by continuing to table this. Uh, I do understand uh, the points that came forth about uh, spending the money on rental versus buying a fixed asset that we're going to be able to use. I do think there's more value in having the asset uh, in our possession. I do think there's more value uh, not only with putting Christmas lights on. I do think from a perspective of the trees, that's a big one. That was That's where I'm at right now. Uh, we spend a lot of money on trees in our parks, uh, and uh, bringing a tree service in is very expensive. Uh, you can look at the numbers. I've seen them over the years. If we can save thousands of dollars on tree uh, uh, removal or tree pruning with this thing, that's that's my selling point. That's where I'm at. Well, you so know, I'm, I'm from a different spot. So my, my concern is that he's got close to 100 of his said projects on his plate. Uh, he's got 18 who's supposedly involved with the lift. How are we going to get all these projects done plus all the existing ones that you know we've kind of committed to residents already? I if I thought that we had an, an opportunity to take that list down to, you know, put it in half from, uh, you know, 100 down to 50, I would certainly consider it. But I'm just not sure how with now the, the mowing season coming up, how we're going to be able to do all these things. I understand, Bill, that it spent $6,000 to cut down the trees over at March. We had to bring a vendor in to come and do that. Um, if I get that, that would be an expense you could save it. I, I'm just not sure, especially now with, with concerns with, you know, hiring people, et cetera, um, you know, uh, for the buildings and grounds department, how are we going to do all this stuff? That, that's my issue. Um, uh, to, to, to that point, um, as Dick said, there's some things in the department we need to talk to about in executive session, about manpower, et cetera. Could we put this vote off till after we have that discussion? I, I have no objection as the mover of tabling this, okay, if you feel more comfortable. To, after, after executive session. I, I have one more point, though. Um, the number of years that we need to get out of this particular asset has to be at least five years. Steve, how many years do you think we're going to get out of this asset? It, it's heavy equipment. It's, you know, if it's maintained properly, it's 
uh, good indefinitely. Um, hoses will go bad you know, on occasion, but you know those are not real expensive items. If you change the oil in it regularly, the rest of it should uh, um, you know be in good shape. It's not a high impact vehicle either. It basically is just a you know a lift. Uh, it's got a 500 pound lifting limit, so it's not putting extra stress on the component, you know, the steel components of the framework. So, uh, you know, it's not a lift, it's a man lift. So, there's a big difference. It's not a material lift, Bill. It cannot, the only material they can put in there is their Christmas tree lights, flashing, et cetera. It's the basket cannot exceed 500 pounds. They go over. Ask me, I know I've been on plenty of go overs. Right. Go overs are not good, they're not, <laughs> they're not fun. So, um, uh, in that regard, and the only reason I asked about diesel, Steve, is the Deutz diesel that JLG uses has a propensity to blow O-rings like crazy. Get yourself a diesel mechanic who can work on pumps. I can tell you that I worked on too many of them. That's why I questioned the diesel. That's so the we, don't have, we don't have a diesel mechanic? The highway department has two of them. And okay. make an agreement with them to service the vehicle, service the machine. But it's um, the hoses will go. Get a hose press and and fittings because you'll have to make up hoses. <clears throat> right, highway department actually has a hose machine over there too. Yeah. But I agree. Can we discuss this after executive session? Please. Please. All right. Uh, point of order. Move the table. Table. Yeah. Second. Aye. 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 But I want to I want to come back to this though. I'm I I, I told myself I'm not going to sit on this tonight. I agree. Well, well, believe we're going to come back to this after executive session. You guys can vote me out too. It doesn't matter. I don't take it personal. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, Motion and second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, we need to move along because unfortunately we have uh, yes we uh, do <laughs> i agree <laughs> and in that even though i don't want to do this but i will you know I i'd like to move to table resolution 2021 58 and the companion on the uh, recreation committee because we're running out of time and i i think you know we should have some discussion and we have several other important things to discuss here so I'll, I'll, I'll move it okay, okay all in favor uh, all right. Aye. Days are extension, seeing on motion pass. Thank you. Uh, next item is resolution 2021 63, authorizing settlement of tax certiorari proceedings regarding MF, uh, MWF LLC. Jim, would you please summarize for us? So, um, this is an agreement to settle uh, three years of tax certs. Um, the petitioner has uh, uh, agreed to waive any refund from uh, town taxes and, and special districts. So the refunds really would be for county and uh, school districts. Um, it's a reduction of $348,000. Where is it? Um, MWF is 1162 Route 9, which is... Opposite Lawrence Farms? Um, hold on. Got to be right there someplace. Yeah. Uh, that's probably um, the real estate, the former real estate. Yeah, property. I believe that's it. Yeah. Um, let's see, that was just purchased. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, um, this is the uh, um, the old Co Mini Cooper site. Okay, what's happening with that now? Do we know? Um, it's another car dealer, I believe. Barbara, if Barbara's on, she can tell you. Mini, Mini Cooper, I think, is supposed to be uh, converting into uh, Subaru. Yeah, that's, Subaru? That's, that's right. It's it's going to be Subaru. Subaru. They just got a site plan approval to remove the berm and to put their signage up. They have a rock. It looks kind of like a chimney, which is the Subaru logo that's going on the front. So they're in the process of finishing that up with the planning department. Okay, I'll move it. I'll second okay. it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 are abstention, and then the motion passed. Thank you. The next several items are really the outcome of our internal 
discussions with also our financial consultants, our bond council. These are you know, resolutions to be considered for uh, bond, you know, funding you know, going forward, as well as the 284 agreement for highways. The first resolution is 20. 2164 resolution authorizing subject to permissive referendum the construction of improvements to and reconstruction of various parks in and for the town of Wappinger, Dutchess County, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of 750,000 and authorizing the issuance of 750,000 bonds of said town to pay the cost thereof, primarily related to uh, the uh, uh, ball field and what we we're talking about earlier the cracks uh, in the fields mm -hmm. as well as the bathroom facilities uh, for the challenger league and the park out there as well as to take you know, spook hill uh, park uh, to the next level once steve gets the building uh, in place so that was we actually get a break out of this so i can see what the 750 is i know you, you read off a lot of things there but i'd like to see the break out of the 750. yeah i i don't know if if we have that, Al, so you okay. know, tonight. Okay. okay. I'd like to see it before I approve it. Oh, uh, anyway, we can. Uh, you know. Can we table it? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, is there a motion? Table? I make a motion to table this. I'll okay. second it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. The days are abstentions. Seeing in the motion to the table. Uh, the next item is uh, related to the highway uh, monies resolution 202165. It's a resolution to authorize the town supervisor, town highway superintendent, and town board to execute the agreement for the expenditure of uh, uh, of highway monies. Uh, this is you know, pertaining to uh, the road list uh, that uh, Mike Sheehan has you know, presented to us uh, previously. Uh, and as uh, I think there was one uh, uh, amendment since the last time that's on the material that you received, you know, pertaining to, uh, you know, what's the front street down in uh, uh, the Chelsea area along the river. Where's Old Troy Road? Jim, you want to summarize? Uh huh? I thought Old Troy Road was going to be included. It's okay. there. That was in there the last time, I think. You know, it, it's in the new one. It's in the, you know, the updated one as well. No, Mike, it's not. Yeah, Mike sent a new one, Bill. I mean, actually, Carol did. Yeah. Listing. It, it was on. on the one that Mike had sent over. I don't see it on this one. Hey, and Old Troy. The second, one the second the list, the second one down below River Road. Right. Yeah. It's there in red, I think. No, that's Craig Place. It's it's not one, a, one other thing here is Craig, Craig Place, which I do not believe was on the first go around. No, it, it wasn't. wasn't. Yeah, Old Troy Road is on the. The, the first list. It's right below River Road, Bill. Okay. Oh, it's under Old Troy Road. Road. Old Troy Road. Old Road. Yeah, it's, there. it's the second one on the list. Right. Right, but it's not in the packet here, is it? Oh. No. Uh, the, the bonding here is for the 1.2 million and including the 1.2 million of the Old Troy Road. Yeah. So the only thing he's added to this is he added Craig Place and he added Front Street. Right. Which, which adds another thirty-seven thousand dollars to the bottom line of the one point two million. And this, I guess to Bill's point, it's it's not in the packet. It's on the list that that uh, Mike had sent out, but it's not in the packet. Where did Mike send it out? Via email? Yeah, Carol yeah. sent it out. Yeah. yeah. When, when was that? Today afternoon. Yeah. It came in around 3 34 o'clock today, Bill. Yeah, I got it. 2 30. Okay, take a look here. There's uh, two versions there because the second one includes a little more information. So, it, it's right. second that you want to look at. So, is there a new updated total for all the yeah, roads? Yeah. Mike? Yeah, it's a total of, uh, uh, if we decide to do Front Street and Craig Place, it's an extra 427 ton. Um, and it's one more day of paving. If you look at the estimate paving days, it's 15. It was at 305,550. Uh, it would be 16 days, and it would be 325,920. And then you added tonnage of the, the blacktop. 
Mike, where's Craig Road? Craig's place is right off of Doyle and uh, Rockingham. Okay. I, I don't know where that came up with. People are approaching me saying that I, I added it. I didn't. I don't I had know where that came from. Me. I agree. I don't know where that came from either. I didn't I, I do don't it. either. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I enough. mean, Front Street, <laughs> Front Street, we talked about Craig Place right. wasn't. Yeah. Right. So Front Street is 217 tons to do it. So you figure that um, times the $64 that we're thinking for blacktop, and that would be that. And uh, and they, they said an extra day of paving. Instead of the 15 days, it would be 16 days. Mike, when you and look at Craig, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I apologize. When you look at Craig Place... Uh, Yes. Did it need to be paved this year? The um, the entrance is is when you pull into the left, um, it it does need paving, but okay. the turnaround's good. So the miller was just going to run up around the edges, around the whole outskirt of it, and then pave it. Okay. Thank okay. you. So at least to put the crown where the water should go. Okay. Thank you. So Mike, based on the the um. 1.2 on here, if we add Front Street with the, the paving and the asphalt, how much more will that add to it? Isn't that 37,000, Mike? Um, it would be like, a, oh man, I'm, um, maybe like 27,000, I think. You had so 20,370. All right, you had, you had 20,370, then you added another 16,720. That's how I came up with 37,000. That's what you gave us from the estimate from Club Excavators. All right. But does it need milling too? They're just going to mill. Uh, what Front Street doesn't need milling now. No. Okay. No, they're going to do the. You know, they're going to pave on both sides of the tracks um, where they can. I guess uh, the Metro North has. They can only go a certain distance from it, but they're going to tie into. Um, I think they're going to go like 30 feet from the tracks, and are going to pave a small section on the North River Road side, and then they're just going to continue it down. I think we're 27 feet from the tracks on the other side, heading towards the river, and then we're going to pave all that. And then go down and go towards the river and go towards the Chelsea Yacht Club. Yeah, I think you're going to do a T or something, right? Yeah, yep. That's what it looks like when it's done, a T. Thank you. So, so again, so the question the is, here, right? It, it's one point two million. Sorry, Chris, and then another thirty-seven thousand. Okay. So call it roughly one point two three eight million. So one one million. No, no, no. You gotta, you gotta add it to the to the one one point three one six. Why do you There's add it to the one three? Because that's not what we're asking for the bond in the next resolution. So that's I, a different. different. Uh, that's a different number. So the one point three one six. Is the amount of money for the for the uh, paving work? The 1.2 million um, is for uh, the the chips money is deducted from the from the amount. So um, you know, so we don't you know we took I think we took half the chips money and deducted it off the 1.3 1.3 to get the bond amount. And we are also planning, Jim. You know, I think on the advice of. Uh financial advisors to take some of the road paving out of the B fund or a DB fund. But it all comes out of the DB fund. Yeah, oh, but not all oh to take some out of the B fund. Okay. B fund, right? Yeah. Well, we're going to bond for one or two years. Chris, what we talked about. Well, this one only assumes one year. So the question is, do you want to do it for two? Because the rates are so low so, now. So. So, so for purposes of the 284 agreement, if you just want to adopt that resolution, so it's uh, thir 13, 13, 16 plus, what are we adding for these two roads? 37,000? That's right. All right, so so then it's uh, 13. Uh, yeah, so why don't you make it uh, 1350? We can do that. So, so amend that to 1350 and then the distance would be amended to, uh, how much, Mike, how, what's the length on this, these two? Um, uh, hold on one second. 
Uh, I have it. Hold on, Mike. I got it. Um, you got it? Okay. Yeah, it's, a, it's another 1,000 feet, so say a quarter mile. So amend. So then the uh, the resolution would be amended to um, pave 6.75 miles um, at a sum not to exceed one million three uh, three hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, I'll move that with the change that Tim just said. Second. Okay, moved and second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. And then for the record, the uh, the schedule of roads listed um, is going to add Front Street and um, Craig Place and Craig Place uh, in accordance with the uh, the memo from uh, the Highway Department submitted today. Correct. Okay. So uh, yes. let's make sure that Old Troy Road is also included because it's not on the uh, resolution. It's, it's, it's there, Bill. Well, that's by design, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and right, and Old Troy Road, correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's not on the one that's here. We'll go back again. All we right. have a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, the nays are abstentions. In on the motion passes. Uh, the next item is resolution 202166, a resolution authorizing subject to permissive referendum the purchase of road equipment for the town of Wappinger, Dutchess County, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of $750,000 and authorizing the issuance of $750,000 bonds of said town to pay the cost thereof. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Seeing none, the motion passed. Uh, the next item is resolution 20-21-67. A resolution authorizing subject to permissive referendum, the reconstruction and or resurfacing of various roads located throughout and in and for the town of Wappinger, Dutchess County, New York, at a maximum estimated cost of $1,200,000 and authorizing the issuance of $1,200,000 bonds of said town to pay the cost thereof. Can we double that for two years? You certainly can if you want. Yeah, because we don't have to spend it all, you know, if we go with that at this point. Doesn't it make sense? Because we're locked in at the rates we get now, correct? Correct. And we don't have to use it, so. Right. And Perfect. Depending on what we use from the highway fund, you know, then uh, we have uh, don't have to draw it all down as councilwoman. I, I think Joe so always to told us it makes sense to do it for two years when you can. Yes, no? that's what our advice okay. is. Do we want to one two point four man, Chris, and double it? Yeah, I, w I mean, because that, that's basically the last, this is year three for me on this, and it's always in and around the same, you know, right. we're plus same or minus. Miles and everything, same cost, but you don't know if the asphalt cost is going to go up next year or not. Right. But right. So, so then, then, I mean, honestly, if they went up whatever percentage, then, then you do, you know, this year we're doing all just under seven miles, so the next year you do two and two, right. two you know, uh, a so you want to make the motion to make it a two-year and double it, Chris? Uh, I'll make that motion to... So, make so let me just make a couple of points. Sure. Um, so with respect to um, uh, this this bond amount, um, I totally agree that two point, you know, doubling it, uh, considering two years. Um, right now, the one, again, we were looking at $1.3 million worth of work. So the question is, do you want to go to 2.6 for two years worth of paving? Uh, one of the things that had been discussed in the past, historically, we've used CHIPS money um, to do the paving work, but CHIPS money can be used for certain A fund expenses. So uh, theoretically, CHIPS money could be used for repairs at the highway garage, um, the problem, which is an A fund expense. So, I think I'd rather use the chip money to do the highway because if we can do that, rather than having to take money out of the A fund balance, I think that's the probably more prudent way to go. And then double the 1350 to make it either 27 or 26 or some other dollar amount. Just my sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Jim. My apologies. Yeah, no, no, but th that was my point. Is that I mean I don't think we'd be able to use the chips money this year to do work at the highway garage because you know it has to be the money has to be spent in the calendar year, and I don't think we're probably in a position to get highway garage work done this year. Um, but certainly next year, I think it's a possibility. 
So I think if you if you you know next year look at using the chips money to do capital improvements at the highway garage um, rather than spending on paving and use the bond money to do paving, um, I, I think you'd be better you know better served. Uh, makes sense. So I amend that to two point six million. Yeah, that's, that's my that that's would be my recommendation. Okay. Second. I second it. Sorry, Angela. Motion second, all in favor. Aye. 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 Seeing none, the motion passed. Uh, the uh, next uh, resolution we're withdrawing right now. Uh, and then the next one after that is resolution 2021 69, approval of the correspondence log. I have a motion. I make a mo motion to accept the correspondence log. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. In these are efficiency and on the motion pass. As I mentioned at the outset, when we're talking about agenda, I'd like to propose a resolution to approve Eric Axelson, uh, A X E L S E N, uh, for the uh, open you know, position on our uh, assessment board of review. Uh, this would be for a five year term. You know, you've interviewed him and you've uh, previously received his resume, uh, and uh, there's no other candidate. I move it. Second it. I second it. I second. And then second. I just also authorize him to go to training. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. I right, so we'll amend it for him to go to the training as well. So I'll I'll, I'll make the new motion. I'll send a I'll send a the st standard board of assessment review okay. appointment resolution over to the town clerk. Great. Thank you. Do we still have an opening on the assessor group? Committee, you know, advertisement out there, but everybody knows of one. But I mean, we still have an opening. Not right now. Be filled, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I I don't believe that there is one right now. I think it's later in the year that he wanted to start, you know, looking at. But I could be wrong. You know, we. You know, the, the terms expire September 30th. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, there's motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. These are abstentions. Seeing none, the motion passed. Moving on, uh, I've proposed a resolution designating April as National Autism Awareness Month. I did have a nice uh, write up on that uh, that uh, Dawn had prepared. I will send that around, uh, but I think uh, it's very important. We've done this in the past, but I think increasingly to recognize uh, the uh, special needs of our autistic uh, residents and others you know, related to that. So the resolution that uh, we uh, prepared, which was sent out earlier, but the uh, after the various whereas, uh, the last whereas said that April has been proclaimed as Worldwide Autism Awareness Month for all to recognize the need for more research and help in dealing with the devastating effects of autism. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Wappinger does hereby recognize and proclaim April as Autism Awareness Month and does offer its endorsement to the efforts of the National Institutes of Health. That's the motion. Um, and like I said, I'll send to you this well written uh, write up that uh, Dawn prepared. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Extensions? Then on the motion passed. And the, the next item on the table, you know, we'll put it off to the next time Community Affairs Advisory Committee. So now, you know, what we you know need to do is to have a motion to go into executive session. Uh, this would be involving uh, CPA uh, interviews. Uh, they've been very patient uh, in waiting mm -hmm. for us. I think we have three uh, groups uh, that want to talk with us uh, and uh, acquisition HR personnel matters and okay. high Barbara will come on and I think also uh, the sports uh, or contracts uh, need to be discussed so uh, I think the logistics will be we'll go uh, out into executive se session uh, for this initially if Frederick will uh, join us and Frederick what order would you like to have because we'll need to have time far admit them into uh, the uh, room uh, in you know uh, first by group so what order would you like to have uh, so I would propose we start with mr. Alan s Wother. Uh so if 
if Tom can um, do his thing so that we can have him into the... And so that's uh, the, uh, a bon Bonidio, or however you pronounce it, I'm sorry. If yes. I'm... yes, yes. Okay, okay, and are there two, two individuals from that? No, just one person. There's two, there's Joseph Hero as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Two on the, that's why I list. Okay, so I'm sending a note, to, you know, let's go in executive session and we'll uh, admit the two uh, just shortly, okay? Everybody has, um, well, let's see, I'm just texting them down. Frederick goes in and he can sit in and participate, you know, with the uh, interviews, I think. Okay, so then, you know, you heard that the two gentlemen uh, from Benito, you know, we'll go in first, okay? And then what would be the order after that, Frederick? Uh, how would you like to move? Uh, would Mr. Zimmerman next, or how would you like to do that? Uh, Mr. Zimmerman is third. Um... So Tom has it. Tom's listening, so I just want to get the order in. Okay. What do you propose? A a a a Yes, Tom has the, the list. Uh, let me just see here. So you, you want Zimmerman to be... So uh, we have uh, the Bonadio group, uh, number one. Yep. Number two, PKF Okana Davis. Okay. Then Mr. Zimmerman uh, third. Okay. Lastly, R RBT CPS. Okay. Tom, you got that order? And then I'll let you know when to send the others in, okay? One by one. Okay. Okay, so uh, let the rest of us go into executive session and then I'll, I'll let the others uh, that may need to enter for other discussion to hold on patiently. Sorry about this. I'll make a motion we go into executive session so we do this. Second. Okay. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, we're going to move into executive session. Thank you, everyone. Two-minute recess.